Hey, you're your deserve. You want the mix? Yeah. What you want? We want the mix. We want the mix. Hey, 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 hey. Que lo que, que lo que, mi gente. What's good? What's good? Welcome back to the Organic Fanatic. You know what it is. Back to you back on Saucy Sundays. And we hold my brother holding it down here. My manito, two shots. Different mother, same father. All glory to the most high, Yahweh. Hey, talk to her, two shots. Que lo que. What's up, man? What's up to the channel or the panel? What's up to the chat, replay gang? Um, everybody out there, I'm excited. Uh, I'm happy. It's a good day. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's always a good day when I got my brother. Greetings to you, Keith Watkins. Full brim salute. I got my brim on today, so you get the full brimmy. Yeah, <laughs> you know what it is? Hey, Keith Watkins, your ATL in the building. You know what it is. I hey, appreciate you guys, everybody in the chat, chat gang. As soon as you pop in, give a like. You know what to do. If you're here, you subscribed already. Bell notifications. Everybody down. You know, we've been we fighting it through. Hey, Angelo, salute to you. He's out there doing his thing. My brother grinding. Machete out there grinding. My brother came to hold me down right here. Two shots. You know what it is. Gracias por venir. Holding it down. We're here to entertain y'all just to have fun because we love the Knickerbockers. Always talking Knicks. I salute to you guys. Sober Sunday, saucy Sunday, smoke them up Sunday, whatever you got. If you need to get a traguito, manita, I'll wait. You know, to get it. <laughs> nah, I'm good, man. Today's uh, sober Sunday for me, man. I, good. That's how we do it. It's all good. Yeah, I was out with the family earlier. We went to uh, uh, this jumping place called Urban Air. I'm pretty sure you heard of it. It's over by your way. And then uh, we came here, and I'm, now I'm chilling. Yeah, man. Family first. And now to our second fan, the Knicks Nation here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we, ha we had a game yesterday. We had a game against the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets? The Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nah. Not going to be able to do it. Uh, and <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going around about this game. <laughs> People talking a lot the about it. Josh Hart, Josh Hart mean was hilarious, bro. <laughs> so we got Macau Bridges. People roasting my guy, talking about he's Squidward, Squidward, Squidward. Sorry, Squidward. Looking at SpongeBob and his buddy out here. He's looking from the outside in. He looks sad after the game. You know they talking to my guy, and he looks like he's hurt. Uh, tell tell me your first your thoughts on the game from what you saw, real quick. We'll get into more details of it, but. How does that look like to you? Does he look like? Uh, is that accurate? Would you say that's a, that's about? <laughs> Listen, man, it, it 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 comes across obvious. I mean, to me, that uh, there's a there's a little something going on there. He 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 looks a little like like they say FOMO, fear of missing out. You know what I'm saying? There's a little something about that that it, it's so it's, it's you know it's like his reactions that get me. It's like because he's like. He's the calm. He gives me that that vibe that he's calm, but kind of sad too at the same time. You know you what I'm saying? You ain't playing it off too good. No, nah, because it's like I'm thinking about when he was in the podcast and they were like joking and laughing and having a good time, and he's over here like quiet and smiling and not really like jovial like the other guys. But then it's like it's like I, I feel like he wants. It's like it's in him. Like he wants to just let it out, but. You know, due to obvious reasons, he's not gonna he's not gonna show it. Okay, yeah, and so uh, you you know everybody. So it it was just funny to see, as you said in the podcast, see him after the games. They giving them giving them ish. You know what I'm saying? Bugging him. That's your boy. You know, your boy. You are gonna give him a little. You know what I'm saying? Yo yo yo. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna call you. I was gonna call you. Have your agent answer the phone. Uh, we're going to dinner tonight. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna answer. The, I'm gonna answer that call. Yo, it's gonna be in about ten minutes. Meet us outside after the game. After the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
You know, all the speculation. You know what it is. The minute the jersey is <laughs> going up, you know, suspect combos have. <laughs> Yo, and it, it's always Josh Hart, bro. Like he's like the like the leading recruiter for this man. Like it never fails, and and it's always on point, bro. No, yo, Josh Hart is crazy. He's the instigator. You just see him there. <laughs> <laughs> he, yo, he, has he got that. Bit. He got that. <laughs> <laughs> Next clap, yo, he's wild, bro. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. It's crazy to see, you know, see all this happening here, uh, see him to come. I mean, that's who we said we would like to see. You know, we love him. We would hope that would happen. You know what I'm saying? And speaking of FOMO, is this what people FOMOing about right here? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That'd be one scary lineup, bro. And, like, I'm going to be real with you. If it were me, personally – I swap out twenty three and put uh fifty five. Wait, wait, well, what? Yeah, if I'm if that's just my that's just me though. That's me. I would swap out twenty three. I'm not saying to trade them or anything like that. I'm just saying you know put twenty three on the bench. You can't, you can't and then start in fifty five. Oh well, okay. So when you said get twenty three, you said not trade them. So you said bench them. Yeah, yeah. Put them in the bench unit. I, I got confused what you were saying. So you saying bench Mitch, start iHeart, and you and then and then you and then that that'd be a real scary lineup, in my opinion. I don't know because you already have, in my opinion, you have two great defenders right there, and I want a little more firepower in the offense. Okay, I, I like how you told me. For a second, I thought you were saying get rid of twenty three. I was like, wait, wait, we gotta have a deeper conversation. If that's like, we got. We got to get a little more out of that. If you... <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Get off the ledge, okay? We 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 having a we have a civil conversation right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't jump out the window, okay? Come back, come back, <laughs> come back inside. Come back, read. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? We chilling right now. We good. We're not talking about no trades. I don't wanna I don't wanna hear nothing about no fire. Nobody. We, we good over here. We good. I need to put this down. I need to put... <laughs> I'm saying, you know, I'm I'm calm. I'm like like my man Ross said the other day. Cool, calm, and collected. We chilling. Gotta bring it in. Gotta bring it in. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of this, uh eight shots on Sunday. Hey, salute to Michael Drake. Appreciate you. Hey, full broom salute, Michael Drake. Ain't see you in a minute, but appreciate you joining back us again. Always loyal, faithful, love our family out there. You in the chat, we got love for you always. Appreciate you. Give a like and subscribe. You know what it is. Put your comments. I want to hear what you guys think. Any combos that we throw out here, what do you think about this here? We're going to be reading it out. So what's good, my brother? What's good? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that Brooklyn game was telling. It was good for the first three quarters. And then what we knew was going to happen, as it was supposed to happen, happened. And in that game, which some things you were talking about, what what do you think about forty eight full minutes produce McBride, second player in Knicks history because it was him and Josh, first two players to do it in the same season since the seventies. Tell me your thoughts on that. Since I mean, that's a little telling, isn't it? It's been fifty years, almost, or I don't know, whatever it is, but. I'm going to die on this hill, man. If if there's one thing I can change about Tibbs is the rotation. Um, I'm super grateful that he got us where we are and we're, we're playing the way we are. And I'm, I'm, I'm eternally grateful for that. Uh, I can appreciate now that he's starting to do some changes to the lineup. He's tinkering with the, with the starting unit and, and trying to small ball out, and you know what I'm saying? I can appreciate all of that. But the hill that I'm going to die on is the rotations, man. Like, I get it. He's, you know, 21 or whatever it is, 22, deuce is, and and, and he, he could probably wear those minutes, you know, like a badge of honor. But, but why? Like, if it's not needed. Like, if you could stagger those minutes, like, you know, maybe – 
I don't. I don't even know, man. I'm. Not, I'm not. I'm not. No. I'm not a. I'm not a. A legend in the game. I'm not a coach. I never did it on any kind of level. I'm just a player. And if you ask me, I don't want to play 48 minutes. Like I. I, I mean, I want to play. I don't want to play 10 minutes, but I don't want to play 48. Like. Why does it have to be one or the other extreme? Like, why can't we have a healthy balance? And that's my thing with Tibbs. Okay, well, you're you about to hit me with that big pun. I'm not a player. I fire Tibbs a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like I, it, everybody knows how I feel about it at this point. I don't want to be the dead horse. And, again, I am very, very appreciative of where we are. It's just, you know, change up the rotation a little. I must give you props. You have adjusted. You owned up on some of them. I mean, on some of your different takes on there. But as a hey, just as the Knicks, we adapt and overcome, right? We adjust to different scenarios. We live and learn. I I can see what you're saying. I definitely see 48 minutes is a lot. Only two players in the whole NBA season to do it. However, my and they team, both happen to be in the Knicks. Like you know, that's that's a lot. And behind and behind Thibodeau is. You know, it, it's I, I get it. Look, I totally get it. But my only kickback, Josh Hart, prior when we was fully healthy, he wanted more involvement. He was complaining he wanted more touches. He wanted to be more involved. He want so they you it's here you go, bro. You you got all the time, all the touches you want. Don't give up the threes like you were saying. You want to be confident. Don't don't give it up. You was asking for this. You wanted some touches. You say you want him stop doing the hot potato. Be confident in his threes, which I know that's that's been your sentiment. You want him to be confident in that shot, make or miss. Just step into the shot and take it. So that's definitely been your take. I, I think you're hundred percent right on that. Um, that's for Josh Hart. Considering what we have on the bench, I think he's tried some. I mean, you're not going to put Charlie Brown, or you're not going to put, you know, Toppin. In any of those minutes where you're gonna feel confident for a run, or they're gonna they're gonna hold in a defensive, or they're gonna impact as much as what he's already made a move of, he has put Sims in rotations. He has put Bogdanovich and Burks in there. Pretty much everyone that we have available. Now we don't have a lot of people available, so because of that, and the 48 minutes, I think it's justifiable. Maybe just a little bit on Josh, bring it down because Josh has been in the league not a. a Right. Just, just a slight kickback. I mean, we did go out and get shake, shake, shake your Milton. So why not? The only reason I'll say the only reason I'll say no, and the only reason you haven't seen shake with Tibbs is a creature of habit. You like Tibbs is a, he has to see a body of work, whether it's in practice, whether something he has to see what you can do, how he can use what you can do, and how can he implement that with what he already has, and how can that work together? You know what I mean? Like, if you look at it, Deuce has been in the team three years. And mm. in December, in December, he cracked five minutes, I think, in one game. You went from five to 48, so you got to give him some kind of he, – he, Deuce has sat there patiently. Deuce is, so you ain't just going to come shake. You just got picked up off the waiver wire. You're just going to come and play 10, 15 minutes. You know, the only reason Burke has done it because Tibbs knows him. He's trying to give him some leeway. He knows the system. He knows what Tibbs needs. So Tibbs has familiarity with that. Bogdan is experienced veteran. You know, him and Vets. Old or not, whether he's rubbing Ben Gay on his knees, icy <laughs> hot on his shoulders, he knows he's a vet. He's played. He's got experience. He's a playoff. So he's going to see how he can use him. He knows his game. Shake. Shake has been okay in Philly. He hasn't – he's been passed around like a hot potato. It's not like he has a, a, a – something that he has go to that people can be like a Jamal Crawford. Like Jamal Crawford is going to cross you over and drop 50. I can trust him for this. There's <laughs> nothing that you can really say that Shake does really good. I mean, if it is, let me know. What do you see that Shake could do good that you've seen him do that he can help us in this team right now? I mean, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I haven't seen much of Shake to to be able to tell you what he brings to the table. But I'm just saying you have these weapons available. And if you don't want to go the Shake route, like you mentioned, Sims. And, you know, uh, absolute Basura Burks, whatever. Like, you know, like, 
I'm just saying there's a there's a happy medium, bro. I'm just saying you can't go from one extreme to another, you know? And in, in my personal opinion, I believe that there's a happy medium where instead of beating a team by 20, you beat them by 10, but you you level up the minutes a little better, you know? And that's just me. But other than that, like, no complaints from Tibbs. I absolutely appreciate, like I said, that he's trying new things because there was a time where he wouldn't even try new things. He was just stuck on his ways. So I, that shows to me personal growth. And if you can grow, then I can rock with you because, you know, you you, you can acknowledge your mistakes and, and get better. But it's just now I need him to, to, to hone it in on the whole, you know, hot or cold, like, you can't go 48 minutes on one player. Like, that's just, that's murder. <laughs> Eventually, like, I don't care who you are. You're going to break down. Like, you could be 21. You could be 22. But eventually, it's going to catch up to you. These is, this is, these are grown men that he's going up against, you know? Okay. Is all I'm saying. Hey, I appreciate that feedback. And I, you think you're right on it. But I'm going to put a pause on that comment real quick. And I don't mean like pause because he says it crazy, but. A salute to Michael Drake, my guy. This is for you. Happy birthday to Michael Drake, who had a birthday this past week. 57 years on this earth is a huge blessing, huge accomplishment. So salute to you, Michael Drake. 57, my guy. A young salute. Young 57 team. years young. <laughs> Bless, brother. Hey, salute to you. Pray healing, deliverance, joy, and all that to your family, my God. Appreciate you checking in always. Bless. Enjoy you. your day, brother. You see another 57, my God. Keep it, keep it going. Gotta keep it going. 57 more. And Duncan at 104. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Hey, happy birthday to you. Salute to Johnny Harris in the building. Salute to Clarence Miles. Hey, Clarence Miles, first time in the building. Have I seen you here before, Clarence? I don't know. Salute to you. Sir. What up, Clarence? Hey, G-Man78 in the building. Johnny Harris, our local hater. Always an appreciator. Kind of. In the comments, yo, salute to you guys all. Uh, Johnny Harris says, can't believe Brunson has a commercial now. Hey, they're starting to recognize his... He been had, he been had that, uh, that uh, Dunkin' Donuts commercial. Him and him and Josh, right? Him and Josh. Nah, he had it with that old lady when they were shooting shots. Oh yeah, it was a Gatorade. Was it Gatorade? Nah, Dunkin' Donuts, bro. Oh, yeah, Dunkin' Donuts. And he had another one with, with Josh, uh, with Josh Hart. Oh, uh, I don't know about that. He's doing his thing. Salute, salute. Johnny Harris also says shake is like McDonald's. Doesn't work like the McDonald's milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but but listen, like. I'd rather I'd rather put him on and him show me that it doesn't work than just have him on the bench and 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 guess. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I look. I don't think that he's. I think he's trying a combo with Shea. He's just not going to display it. Yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, see how he doesn't practice. See how he can use him. Because I mean, think about how good Miles McBride has been in the G League. Remember, he was triple doubles, and then he's doing it in practice. He said he's been doing it in practice for a long time. In the if I'm am I lying? He's he just in the post covers. He does it all the time. He's one of our most accurate shooters in practice all the time. So I mean, this was even when IQ was here, when RJ is here. So, I mean, he's been doing this business for a minute, and Tibbs know what he can do. And just now he's releasing, releasing him to 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 the NBA because mm -hmm. in the situation. So this is where he says you have to sacrifice for the team. You know what I mean? This is for the greater good of the team. He's doing phenomenal now. But there's going to be a time when everybody's healthy, he might go back down to seven. Could be more because now that he's he's trying another lineup. So besides the 48 minutes that you're talking about, yes, I do agree that it's extensive. I, I, I think it can be. However, in those 48 minutes, he's doing multiple combinations. So you're seeing him when Brunson's out, Deuce is in the game. You're seeing him when... Dante DiVincenzo's out the game. Deuce is in the game and a, in different combinations. So he's trying different combinations, different looks of how Deuce can impact. And Deuce is coming in now, and this last couple of games, the only reason it's 48, to me, what I'm looking at, I see him as impactful like OG. He's the baby G. There's OG and then there's baby G. I mean, if facts or not, when he's playing, he's impacting the game like how OG did. If you look at the game, when OG comes in, 
Defensively, he's causing turnovers. He's pressing all the other players. So he's doing that in the small light version. He's the he's the beta version of OG. He's the OG light. <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> So he he's he's impacting the game. He's playing all over Jamal Murray. He he slowed down. I'm gonna say slow down. He did not lock up Curry. He did. I mean, he took, put, messed up his game. Balled against Golden State. Got balled against uh, Jamal Murray. Uh, he's played. Uh, I mean, he's done phenomenal in all these games. So you're seeing his impact. Plus 48 minutes, and you could give 26 points while playing the guard. Is, you know what I'm saying? And he speaks very, very meaningful points, too. I mean, these are big, you know, and there was he's kind of playing like how we wish somebody else would have played. Can you guess who that player was? I'm gonna guess JR or no. Grimes. Grimes could not ah. be yeah. I came back to <laughs> he's taking strays. I borrowed your gun. <laughs> I'm giving Grimes yeah. three shots. And I'm not saying it to take shots, but basically that's what we wanted. Out of if Grimes would have been hitting shots, he would have been doing what Deuce did last night. He would have been playing 48 minutes defensively shooting. That's what we were expecting from Grimes. It just took a little longer. That's just it. Because if you look at it, look at Deuce. He had 26 points. How many shots did he take to get that? Did he say like Grimes, I need more touches, or did he do it in nine shots? You know what I'm saying? I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I mean, I, I want to clarify real quick. I said Jr. I meant to say R.J., but um, yeah. I mean, I, I hear I hear your comparison. I mean, I'm not gonna. It is what it is, bro. At this point, I can't. I can't bash him. You know, we're here now. So, all I'm gonna say is that uh, I, I I appreciate what Grimes did and what he meant, and uh, I can appreciate now what. Uh, Deuce is doing, or should I call him Trace? I mean, I don't even know. This kid is on fire from three. We might, we might have to switch it up for Buddy. We might have to <laughs> switch it up for Buddy. I mean, that's something else. That's that's kind of crazy. Um, so Deuce came in, played very well. Dante, who I will say he's been in a slump the last couple of games, but he hasn't been who we've seen for a lot of games. We got spoiled with Dante. Technically, Dante should have been averaging 12-ish. 13 throughout the, the year, and that would have been, yo, you're playing a great game, bro. <laughs> mm. 13 points, but like, we were like, that would be a great game for someone who, the amount of money you're making, you can give us 13 points. Great. that You're doing good. Three three-pointers a game, we would have been happy. But here he comes hitting six, seven shots, uh, six, seven three-pointers, which, by the way, he's a couple away. I don't, I don't got the exact number, which... He, he's I'm, creeping up. I think he was 21 away. From breaking the record from Evan Fournier, he's yeah. Starting tonight, tomorrow, we have twelve games left in the year. Twelve games left for the entire year. We're going to revisit this a little bit later. But tell me, guys, Michael Drake, I know you're my stat guy out there. How many does he need? I think I want to say he needs a twenty in the last game. I don't know how many he hit yesterday. I yeah. want to say he. I want to say he needs like 20, 20, 20 to twenty five left. Yeah, I kind um, of before yesterday. Before yesterday's game, he needed twenty-one, and I don't know how many he hit yesterday. So yesterday he hit. He, yesterday he hit like three or four. If he hit three or four, so he's roughly around seventeen away from breaking the record from Fournier. So, I think he's gonna do it. I mean, he's been averaging about three or four a game, and every once in a while he goes supernova and gets like seven, eight. Yep. So. I mean, if you do the math, that'll be three in the next 10 games going conservative, and that should push them over by, like, a good five to ten. I don't know. Yeah, walking, you keep walking, says around 18. So it's in that ballpark because if you had 21, you had, like, three or four yesterday. So it's closing in. You guys in the chat and you two shots. Over or under, he breaks the record before the season. Oh, yeah, I'm going, I'm going over. I'm going uh, conservative. I'm going five over. Five over? So, okay. So, you're going five over on the take. You guys in the chat, over or under? And what? What? how many How many three do you think he ends up? If he breaks it, or how many does he fall short? I'm not as good you, as Rob. You said we got how many games you got left? Yeah. Starting tomorrow, we have 12. So, we, we play Detroit tomorrow. And then from that game to the remainder of the year, we have 12 games left. Okay. All right. I feel, I feel confident. I'm going to go over. Five over. Okay. All right. 
Dante is wearing down. Johnny Harrison, here we go. <laughs> it goes down. So he's not playing nowhere near the amount of minutes that that Deuce played or Josh. Josh is getting heavy minutes. I don't, if there's anybody getting heavy minutes, it's Josh. Now, yeah, on that thought you guys are talking about, heavy minutes for Josh Hart, heavy minutes for Deuce. Uh, Deuce will do it over. Do you think, being that they're playing heavy minutes at once, everybody's healthy, do you think uh, they're going to get reduced roles or reduced minutes? What do you think Josh goes hard, Josh Hart goes to once everybody's healthy? you think he stays above 20 or under 20? He's, he's going to be right around 20. He has to be because, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you're meaning when Randall and, and, full, and Mitch come back. Everybody's here, full healthy squad. And OG, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay about twenty minutes, cause you know Tibbs loves defense. OG's gonna be playing forty, conservative. Um, Randall is another grandson of his. He's gonna be playing forty. Then you, uh, you stagger those minutes. That'll leave about eight minutes. He'll be coming in and spelling them every once in a while. So that'll give him about sixteen minutes. Um. And then you got uh then you got Devo, another 40. So he could probably spell him a couple minutes. And then you got obviously Brunson, another 40. Um yeah, I'm I'm gonna go conservative and right around 20, 25. Okay, that's a good call. And then Deuce, do you think Deuce is he remains in the rotation? He's out the rotation. And if he's, he's in, how many minutes? He's, he's going to get bumped again because if if you you keep saying Tibbs is a creature of habit, right? And, and, and the creature of habit, once he gets his tools back, is going to go back to his habit, which is playing his guys 40 minutes. So where, where are you going to find these minutes for these guys? Like They're, they're definitely not going to play 40. And, I mean, Deuce might even go down to 10. Um, I don't know. I don't see it. Like, because... All right, starting five, Brunson, Devo. You got OG. You got Randall and Mitch or iHeart, whatever. Yeah, well, I mean, either way, iHeart or Mitch is. I mean, I don't think Josh Hart's gonna come in for either of them, and Deuce is not gonna come in for either of them. Right. So, like I said, you gotta find about twenty minutes in between these four players, and. If you if you rest each eight minutes, that'll give you eight, 16, 24, 32. So that'll give you 32 minutes to split between uh Deuce and Josh Hart. So that'll be right around 16 minutes. But again, you know, um that's just conservative. So and and I'm doing like I'm doing this is very basic rough math. Like I don't want to go super into it. Uh but yeah, that, that's how I see it. I mean, there's it's really no other way. So we got we got Michael Drake says Deuce will do it at that, and he's going on the over. Keith Watkins says about two forty five, and he's on the over. So he thinks about five more. Johnny Harris says how many for two eighty? So Johnny Harris is it? I think he's saying that at least seven over. So jo even Johnny Harris, our local <laughs> Nick Hater, Miami participator, even he got Devo breaking it by at least seven over. So that's pretty big. Well, I, I, again, I mean, I said conservative, so I'm expecting more than that. No, no, I, I agree. I'm just saying what the chat's saying, and you're already on the over. So anything over 241, you guys are winning on the over. And I do agree as well. I think he definitely breaks it. I, you know, the fact that – and I think he's he'll break it this year, and he's going to break his own record next year. Uh -oh. <laughs> like, that man has – that. I have never seen anybody have the green light like this man. Like, this man can go one for 15 on the three, and he'll still have the green light this year. And they all look good, though. You're, you're <laughs> like, just, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, and they all look good. It's like, dang, like, that almost went in. Like, damn, that rimmed out. Even though he's one for 10, but like, I, I need you to keep shooting it. <laughs> hey, but my arm's tired. Well, shoot it some more. That's what that's <laughs> Well, shoot it with the left. <laughs> Break the other hand if you gotta do it. <laughs> yeah. uh, G Man, G -Man, G -Man 78 says Deuce plays some. Uh, Deuce off the bench, 15 minutes is what Michael Drake says, which I'm gonna agree. It's like he's definitely not playing 48. However, 
So again, these things, and I agree with you guys. I think that if everybody's healthy, so let's think about it. You're going to have, reality is, I heart's going to start. In, in my opinion, just my opinion. I'm not, I'm not with coach. I think I agree. I think I heart's been playing too great this whole year. He's still in rhythm. He's still in game shape right away. You know, he's not coming off an injury. Yes, a strain, calf and Achilles, but he looks 100% healthy now. He's been in rhythm with the bench and the starting unit. Both sides, bench and starting unit, are, are, are used and are more flowing with iHeart. So iHeart's already in rhythm. He's in, he's in the zone for, this, for the season. He's already in that mindset already for the season. So I think naturally for the rest of the year, for the team's success, as again, put the team first, put yourself last, I think iHeart going forward is a starter, in my opinion. I think he's a starter. So you look at him. Randall comes back. So who's going to back up iHeart? It's Mitch. That's a no-brainer. That's one and one. That's a five. Five locked up there. Randall comes back. Who's Randall's backup? Precious. Precious is going to be his backup. It's not going to be Sims. It's going to it's gonna be Precious. Now, Precious is not getting 20 to 30 minutes. I'll tell you that now. Randall missed a good chunk of the season. He's going to want to play 48 minutes if you let him. <laughs> He's going to be on minutes and six. At least the last couple of games. So I'm looking at 30 for him. Maybe 12 minutes for Precious around there. So you got Precious back in Randall up. I still think Precious gets some minutes. It ain't going to be heavy. Randall's going to want a bunk bulk of it unless, God forbid, an injury, which we hope not not happen. So I'm looking at Randall at least getting 30, you know, him getting maybe 15 Precious to help out defensively, depending on matchups as well. I think that's going to help. Then you got OG. OG's playing – I'll say with the injuries, I'll give OG about 26 minutes. I don't think he plays more than 26. Could be more, depending matchups, playoffs, who we're playing. But I'm looking at about a good 26 minutes for him and then Josh Hart back to him. So there's going to be some good 15, 20 minutes, depending on matchup, back and forth. So Josh is going to back up OG. So that's going to be interesting how they play and then you got the two guard Dante. Now who backs up Dante? Deuce. Deuce. Who's gonna back up Jalen Brunson? Deuce. Deuce. So Deuce is gonna. You're looking at maybe 20, 25 minutes for Deuce, in my opinion. You know, you brought up Precious, and I, I absolutely forgot about him. Um, yeah. So that takes in my in my analysis that takes away. Let's say another eight minutes. So instead of thirty two, you have. 26. So if you split 26 between Hart and, and Deuce, that'll be 13 minutes each, conservative. But like, in, in my opinion, Josh Hart is a, one of one of Tibbs' more favorite. Like, he's more favorited than Deuce. So that's 16. I'm going to try to bump it up to like 20. So like I said, Deuce maybe you get like 10, 12 minutes. Like, <laughs> it's just the nature of the beast. Like, I'm going again. I'm going by what Tibbs has shown me in the past, and you, everybody and you keep saying he's a creature of habit and he doesn't like to change it. Blah blah blah. That's how I see it. No, and I, I hear you on that. And let's see what the chat says. So uh, we got Michael Drake says Josh will still be about 25 minutes. Tibbs loves Hart. Absolutely does. Definitely loves Hart. But we got to think if and this is if everyone's all healthy, everyone's playing. This is in this in this scenario. Should everybody come back before the playoffs? We're going to, let's say, four games before the season ends. I'm thinking that'll be the, the worst case scenario around four games left in the season that everybody would start playing in some kind of rhythm in that scenario towards a playoff run. Everybody healthy in those scenarios is going to be I heart Mitch five. I can, that's not debatable, right? Am I, am I right that those are going to be the fives? Yeah. And we, and we got Julius Randle. Bully, bully, Randall. Behind them is Precious. Yeah. I mean, is there any debate there, or anyone else you think? No, no, you got it. Yeah. I mean, you can put Josh there, but that's like Tibbs, you know, on demand at that point, right? And again, we, like as you say, height, defense, and rebounding. Which defense and rebounding? Josh is obviously a great rebounder, but Precious is a better defender, and he for, got more height. For mm -hmm. for he's a great offensive rebound, which he's proven. And he's a great blocker and a good presence for other teams. Let's say the Cleveland Cavaliers, 
or against Boston with Port, uh, Al Horford and, you know, so we need size, as you say. We need some size there. Which Absolutely. I think, I think Precious would be a better fit in that situation, right? Mm-hmm. And then you got OG, and then you got iHeart. I think, I mean, to Josh Hart. I think Josh Hart and OG, that's basically his replacement. Then you got defense for an offensive rebounder and a runner. So they are a different type of game, but they're both effective there. So even if yeah. OG, even if with OG's elbow, which I think the last couple of games he's had about twenty six minutes or so. So if he has twenty six, you're looking at twenty for Josh. If there's forty eight minutes in a game, maybe twenty two for Josh, twenty six for OG, give or take. You know what I mean? And yeah. You, you got Dante. Who can replace Dante? Deuce. Who can space the floor like Dante? Not like him. But who can? Those. Mm-hmm. And then who plays well off the ball with Jalen Brunson besides Dante? Deuce. Who's an yeah. expert to help defender with Jalen Brunson, which we've all seen those match up together when they played other teams. Shout out to Monica McNutt. I answered the question. We've seen them balling. Deuce and Jalen Brunson, right? So that looks like more than likely that like Deuce could have north of 20 to 25 minutes in those rotations. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Right now, as the season stands, we're the fifth seed, right? We're the third. We just got, I, I want to say third. I, correct me if I'm wrong, Chad. I think with the last game that we won against uh, Brooklyn, I think we're half a game up uh, on Orlando, and I think we just got third by half a game, which could still change. Oh, okay. I, we're between third and fourth. I mean, it's really tight between third and six. So, so that changes my that changes my question because I thought we we just got the well I thought we were, we were on the fifth seed we might have got the fourth seed but whatever I thought I thought we were gonna match up with um, the Magic because we're four and five right I mean it's really close it's still I mean we still, with twelve games it's very very close if you're talking about half a game to a game and a half between third and six so well that's what I'm saying so like for example if the playoffs start tomorrow. And we match up against the Magic. How do you feel about that? Um, and, 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 and I'll give you the caveat that we're all we're everybody's healthy. If it's everybody healthy, I don't think it's I don't think it's a problem. Healthy wise, not healthy wise. This is where skill and experience come into play. We're not sleeping on Orlando. I live in Orlando. I watch Orlando. They got a great up and coming uh, program. They're very deep. A lot of their talent is high draft pick, you know what I mean? So they're, the level of the players that they have are top-tier selections in the draft, all the way down to Jonathan Isaac. Uh, they still got Markel Fultz that's coming off the bench, who was the number one draft pick. You know, so they got a lot of talent. Uh, Franz Wagner, uh, they still got Wendell Carter, who they got from Chicago as a center. You know, they got uh, the young kid Black, who's a tall two-guard. They mix him in there, so he's about 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, he was guarding Jalen Brunson. They had the little skirmish. They got they're a tall team. They're they're a very tall team. So they're they're very interesting. They're very good. They are definitely a future. They're an OKC to me, a two year ago OKC. So they're definitely up and coming. They're running wide, but this is where experience and leadership and coaching will take the play. They're gonna win one, maybe two games in the series. I I, I can't front on that. They're gonna play good, they're gonna be aggressive. Their youth is gonna give us some trouble overall, but if we're healthy, we're just going to out-dominate them, out-rebound them, and then where you have someone like Jalen Brunson, Captain Clutch, Mr. Fourth Quarter, the head game hog, uh, knowing when to play, when to take over a game, Julius Randle, the bully, him and him and uh, um, Paolo Banchero kind of cancel each other out to a certain extent to where he dominates on there. But our offensive rebounding and defense is going to be too much. Our defense All is right. gonna- so you're not worried about it, basically. So now let me, let me switch it back. Let me give you another caveat. Stay Randall's out. How you feel about that? I still don't. I still don't have a problem with that because Precious Achua. Precious is uh-huh. Precious has played very well. We he played well against Orlando the last time we played him when we beat them. Precious played very well. He was dominant in the paint. They still have Jonathan, Jonathan Isaac, who's playing very well. Jonathan Isaac is. Getting back into rhythm, back in the game shape. He plays very well. He's tall, too. He's 7 2. So he can give a problem, but that gives us height. It gives us someone offensive. Gives us someone young. Precious is young, too. So he's not 
an old cat that's just got, you know, the Patrick Ewing knee. Salute to the captain. <laughs> I'm saying he's not wearing knee pads on the knee. Packs is everywhere. I'm saying he, 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 you know, he ain't going with a defibrillator on the bench. They, you know, <laughs> got the energy. So in that aspect, I'm not too concerned. Even going forward with Precious Achua, so I, I'm not concerned too much with the with Orlando. I like them, and I think Orlando's going to be a, a could be a very scary team coming coming up. You know, they're they're deep. That's the problem with them. They're they're deep. This year is gonna their team. This is a year for them to really make a run, because after this year they got to make some decisions. You keep Markel Fultz, who's cut. You, you got him on a sixty mil, and now you got a rookie Jalen Suggs starting over him on a contract. Are you gonna keep that sixty mil coming off the bench? You know, do you got uh? So they they got some moves to make this year. They got a lot of talent, but they can't pay everybody. So if they don't make a run this year, they're gonna have maybe one more year where they have this team intact before they got to start making some, I got to pay these people. So they need to make noise this year and next year. So it's exciting that they're making a run, but I'm going to fear that. And then they, <laughs> the world is going to make a fear that. Well, I got to be real with you, man. I, I'm a little worried because they got a lot of stars. Um, pause. <laughs> hey, but, <man>. uh, <laughs> you know, like, it's 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 a little worrisome to me. I, I would, I mean, obviously, I would feel a hundred percent if Randall was there. That would, I mean, that would be no, it would be a no brainer for me. But when Randall out, I'm a little fearful. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and then, uh, then, uh, the, yeah, that was that was basically my question. Uh, but you kind of answered it already. So um, I was gonna say this home home court advantage play a role whether they get home court or we do, but. I mean, you you just said you don't you don't fear them. So when we went to the game, me, you, and Raw Hebrew went to the game. Facts or not? Yeah, we went to the game. Mm -hmm. Majority of that arena was MVP in Jalen Brown. <laughs> this is this is Madison Square Garden South in Orlando, and my yeah. I mean, so there's there the home crowd or an away game is a home crowd. So <laughs> that's the best thing about the Knickerbockers. It's not that they got to worry about an Orlando team out shouting. It. It's never going to happen. Not never. Look. Never going to happen. You'll never out shout. Not, I'll put it never. People say no. You, you got to hit him. Hold on. You got to hit him with the Charles Barkley. Right, hit, hit, got it. Got it. You do it. Got it. I guarantee it. <laughs> I guarantee they is not going to out shout us. Not now. Not now. It won't happen. <laughs> but they're a good team. I can't sleep. I, I'm in the Orlando area. Orlando is doing their thing. Salute to them. Salute to their coaching staff. Salute to their young cats. Watching the ops. They they <laughs> gonna play. I mean, listen, I, I enjoy rooting for them when I'm not watching my Knicks. I root for this team. I enjoy them. I watch the team. They got good young talent. I like what they're doing now better than when they had the Fournier, the Aaron Gordon, that they were just eighth place playoffs for the last six years prior to that. I, I like the youth and what they got going. They made the right choice for Paolo Banchero over their other pick. So I, I like what they got going now. So they're doing all right. Um, Keith Watkins says, Hart will get at least 28 minutes. Deuce 20. Mitch gets all minutes. And and that's and uh, I Hart says, wait a minute. Hold on. Keith just dropped the bomb. Keith says, Mitch gets all the minutes. And I heart sits. When he when Mitch comes back, he said when Mitch comes back, Mitch is gonna gobble up. He's gonna gobble no, up man. all the minutes, and I heart sits. That's no, they're gonna they're gonna ease him in. There's no way. He says the rest are situational and up for grabs. So between the players, that's an interesting take. Uh, nah, I, I mean if he didn't if he hadn't come back from an, from a surgery. Then maybe I would I would agree with that, but they, he's coming back from a, a foot surgery at that. They're gonna they're gonna slowly ease him in, if anything. Okay, and then G Man says if you season them veggies, they good. That's it. Him, he's going back and forth with Johnny Harris, so they're going back at it. Uh -huh. Walking says we're fourth or as good as fourth. Um, Johnny says pause. You need size castle. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> G-Man got us four and one against the Orlando Magic. So to answer your question, G-Man78 says that Knicks go four and one against Orlando. 
Johnny Harris says Deuce and Dante are tiny. Magic is a young version of the Knicks with the mat. <laughs> Just Johnny Harris. He says they're matching version of the Knicks uh, of the Magic with a dumb coach. Wow. Um, and then Keith Watkins says no. He gets all the minutes that I. Okay, my bad. Let me correct what Keith Watkins was saying. He corrected himself. Okay, I just went. I just graduated sixth grade, so my sixth grade reading. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back to the library for the reading education. <laughs> he says no. He gets all the minutes that I heart sits. Agreed. Yeah. So that's ah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I heart and Mitch. It's it's one and one. Whatever those minutes are, it's just them two. The five is only battling for five. There's no one else taking any of those minutes, bar injury. If I heart and Mitch, that's it. They're getting yeah. a chance to play out. There's nobody else fighting for five time. Uh, Precious ain't going to the five. Sims ain't getting to the five. Sims is break in case of emergency. Sims is going to be rooting with the pom-poms, as Rahibu said, with Bogey and Burke. Shish, Bob. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All three of them are going to be with their pom-poms out there. Very interesting. Who said that? That was Keith? Keith Watkins says that. So he's saying they're going to... Yeah, Keith. Be- I, I agree 100%. Yeah. And then he's, he's saying they basically split time. So I agree with that. And then with Randall, it's, it's only Randall and Precious. Unless something happens, Josh Hart is the... Is the whether Precious or... Or Randall go down, Josh is gonna get inserted somehow in there. If Absolutely. Down, so Josh is the power forward, small small forward alternative to any one of those lineups. So Josh Hart is if something happens to our bigs, Randall and Precious, you're gonna look at Josh Hart in some of those minutes. If the matchup favors us to go small, and then you'll see Precious sit. You know, so let's say we go up against a Cleveland. You might he might sit precious more and play Josh Hart more to play when Randall goes down, maybe for speed, for pushing the pace, for rebounding, you know, because Josh Hart pushes our pace. So, mm. you know, that's something that we he may look at and maybe precious doesn't do it, you know. So, I think matchup wise, we'll look at some, we'll determine a little more of Josh Hart, how many minutes he gets, stuff like that. So, that's gonna be kind of interesting. Yeah, says easy win for the Knicks. So, to your question of how do we handle uh, Orlando Magic. Even Johnny Harris, our local uh, Nick hater, who's a Heat fan, says <laughs> that it's an easy win. So he got to getting a body for that. Um, and Josh, small ball four. Yeah, so I, I think Josh in, in spurts, again, Josh, you're going to look at matchups. I think you're going to see, depending on the minutes for Josh, is going to be on matchups. So Josh and Precious and Deuce, are going to get, I think, at least 15 minutes each per game per series. Depending on matchup is where more than 15, you'll see North. We get Cleveland, you know, if we need size against Parker, we need more speed, depending on how we lose. If Cleveland goes on a run and dominates us on the board, you're going to see Precious and, and Josh get more minutes, maybe more than Deuce. Maybe we need more rebound. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we need more rebounding, then you're going to see a lot of Josh Hart you're going to see a lot of Precious. You're going to see a lot of I Heart and Mitch because we, we may have to dominate boards at that point. If we if, if we get a team like Boston, guard heavy, you know, Tatum, Brown, they're touching the ball a lot, you may see more deuce because we need to slow down those guards. You know what I mean? So depending on that is how Tibbs may alternate most of those minutes. All right, we got Tatum in the game. Deuce, you're playing 78 minutes. Because <laughs> during practice time, you're going to hand out Gatorade. You're going to guard Tatum from practice shots. <laughs> you're doing warm-ups, you're going to guard him from warm-up time. Even from warm-ups, you put pressure on him. 97 feet. 94 feet in the court, but you guard him from 97. From where the usher is in security, you lock him up. So that, that's where you're going to see sporadic on there. But I think they each get about 15 minutes or so. It's going to be interesting because we got a lot, only 12 games. Are you nervous with 12 games left? You guys on the chat as well. Are you guys nervous, antsy, or concerned that you have yet to see Mitchell Robinson or Julius Randle? With 12 games left, is it a concern? 
are you okay with it? Or do you think you're starting to worry? Two shots. That's a, that's a two-part question, so you're going to get a two-part answer. So for Mitch, it's more anxiety. I'm anxious. I want to see how he looks. I want to see how his lungs are, like if he gets winded quick, if he gets tired, if, if he could, if he still could elevate to where he was before, if he still got the foot speed to be able to guard the three-point line and the paint at the same time, if he still has the uh, connection with the team to be able to to direct uh, the defense, you know, it's, it's all anxiety with him. With Randall, it's a whole lot of worry. It's a whole lot of worry because – um, everybody conservatively was like, oh, yeah, he's going to be back. He's going to play 15 games, blah, 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 get his win back, and he's going to be good, and this, that, and the third. And now all we're hearing now is he's still doing, uh, like, uh, what they call it, controlled, uh, controlled padding, like uh, situational uh, contact, the blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, he's not hitting his mark. Everybody's like concerned that his elbow is not going to be right, or not his elbow, his shoulder. And 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 again, that's the shoulder that he uses to be the physical, the the, the to bump people out of their place, to shoot it, and and, and you know what I'm saying? It, it's very very worrisome for me right now because again, he he should have hit milestones way back when, and that he's still not hitting. So when is he going to hit the milestones? Is he going to hit the milestones? Is he coming back? Is he not? Is he going to have the surgery? Like, what's happening? We don't know. Last I heard, he was doing, like I said, controlled uh, pads uh, contact. Like, when is he going to get to the one-on-ones, the two-on-twos, the three-on-threes, the four-on-fours, and then the five-on-fives? When is he going to do all of this? Is he going to do it? When we got a game left in the season, is he going to do it if we beat the first round of the playoffs? I don't know. Okay. Uh, as G-Man says, I want to see them get the chemistry. But then again, they practice together. We just need them healthy, and then they'll figure it out. Um, I think it's, it's, it's definitely telling. The fact that they are not on playing right now is a little worrisome. However, I do trust the doctors and their opinions, and it's a certain extent. And now, the reason I say that is because they're being a little more cautious. Other teams or other organizations would probably rush this process. I'm not saying that it's super bad here and there, but the fact that I think Mitchell Robinson and Julius Randle are the barometer. They are what takes us to a championship and wins a championship, or they are what get you know, they, they are what's gonna tilt the scale. In other words, for me, I think with OG and everybody else we have, I think we can make it competitive. I think we can fight. I think we can win a series or two. But in order to win a championship, I think they are the instrumental championship piece. Now I know Randall hasn't done fairly great, which everybody's going to bring it out, which I know, as I'm saying this, Johnny Harris is typing, <laughs> Julius Randall ain't done shit. <laughs> you know? so I, I he flaked in the playoffs. He played, he, played, he, he froze up. Yo, yeah. so he was like Lot's wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Already He's here. a pillar of salt now. I already see it. He's halfway typing. I, I see the typing it there. But because of the fact that we have other options, other resources for Randall that didn't, he didn't have before, shooters, Dante DiVincenzo, even a bogey, a bird. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just thinking about the last fight now. <laughs> I already knew you were going there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead, bro. Um, because of the fact. <laughs> oh, God. 
because that he has more help now. Uh, Mitch, iHeart, Precious, Dante, um, even Josh Hart, Deuce's development. I think this is going to be able to help us and take us to, which is why we made the trade for OG, why we got rid of Grimes, IQ, and RJ Barrett, and salute to them, because once a Nick, always a Nick. We always love you guys. But as Michael Drake said in this chat right now, he said we went for, we traded in the future for right now, championship window. And that's where we're at right now. That's why we're looking at it. Um, that's why even we're talking about uh, Mikhail Bridges. But what we have right now is more than enough to contend. But the health of these players to make it through the playoffs, which is that's why they're delayed. That's what we're talking about now. To make it through the play, we, we need them not to just make it to a series and get injured or re-aggravate something. So I think that's why you're seeing long-winded answer to say that's why I think you're seeing the slow progression, the slow integration of them into the team, into a game or rushing them to make sure that they're good. Because Mitch, I want to say he's been at least two to three, probably this is going to be his third full practice, five on five, to where he's getting contact and then reevaluating how he's feeling after this contact. Do you have any soreness? More x-rays? Is there any fracture? Anything re-injured? You know, how's, how are you winded? You know what I mean? So now they're they're looking at how they're probably practicing already, seeing how, and then going back and forth, see how they feel after a couple of days. Is there any soreness? Is there any re-aggravation? How do you feel? Let's look at the tear. Is there any tear? So I think you're seeing more of that in the background that they're not letting us know and seeing how they feel that once they're in, all right, now we go hard and just go, go all in. But that's what I was thinking. Latest, I think March 31st against OKC. It would be nice to see him, at least Mitch, on tomorrow's game that we're looking at uh, uh, teams that they should dominate or that you would want to see, um, you know, Mitch go at, you know, like the Detroit Pistons would probably be missing half of everybody. <laughs> so it would be a good game to see him against. So we'll see in those moments. Um, do you think it's important for Mitch to get some games in rhythm? Would you? Yes. How many games do you think he should at least get before he's in rhythm for playoffs? Yes, absolutely. I think he needs rhythm. Absolutely. 100%. Um, I think he proved that uh, when – I can't remember when exactly because this man gets injured often. But, you know, he had an injury before, and it took him like 10 games to, like, really get back to the Mitch that we all know and love. So that's going to be my my best guess at the moment is he's going to need about 10 games to get back to, you know, the Mitch that we all know. Uh, I would love it if he were to come back within the next game or two because that gives him about 10 games. Uh, and I, and I, I'm fairly confident that he will come back some at some point soon. I'm not going to say within the next game or two, but like you said, at least with Mitch, we've heard – the progress reports, we've heard he's hitting the milestones, and we haven't heard nothing bad. And then when it comes to Randall, you just we haven't heard anything at all except contact, you know, control contact, this, that, and third, blah, blah, blah. And they've been very hush hush. And that's why I don't really like, I'm not gonna say I don't like. Well, yes, I'm gonna say I don't like the way the medical staff handles. Uh, reports, not not so much what they're doing, but reports, because it's always, oh, it's just a bruise, oh, it's just, you know, a minor contusion, uh, blah, 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 and then a week later, oh, well, he's having surgery to repair the meniscus or the elbow or blah, 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 so it's, it's always very secretive with them, you never know what's going on, they never inform you, and nine times out of ten, they try to undersell the problem. Like, I wish you would tell me that the problem is worse than it actually is so that you can give me good news and be like, oh, well, instead of him being out till next season, he's coming back in the playoffs. Then that gives me optimism, not, you know, concern. So, but back to Mitch, because that was the question. Again, ten games I think is a good, good enough size to get him back to where he needs to be to be effective. So hopefully in the next game or two. 
Okay, so you think that Mitch needs at least 10? You think uh, Mitch needs more time on court than Randall? Considering because Randall's already played quite a bit, you think the foot is more of an issue where he, he needs more time in comparison to an off shoulder? For Randall, it's not a shooting shoulder. You think it's more that Mitchell would need more time and rhythm and timing more than Randall? Uh, again, this is my humble opinion. I'm not a doctor or anything, but not pros here. Really. <laughs> you know, yeah, for real. Don't, don't, you know what I mean? Consult your doctor. <laughs> this is not a, a medical channel. We, I, I don't <laughs> plan to know anything. I said, I don't got to do nothing but just go on the court. Yeah, I was broken, but he said, I should just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Here's it. But yeah, like to me, me, uh, Surgery versus non-surgery, I think, is more concerning that you're that you went through a surgical procedure, and then you know you have to basically it, it got repaired, so you gotta basically build it back up. That's that's me as a non-medical student, <laughs> you know, giving you my opinion. I think surgery is much worse than non-surgery, so. Again, I'm gonna say that uh, I think I'm gonna think Mitch is gonna need more time to come back than Randall. Okay, you heard, uh, it, you heard it here first. That's his medical professional opinion. <laughs> <laughs> the World Health Organization. He's his application is in, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna add PhD to two shots. <laughs> listen, listen. Keep the who out of this. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. Once again, I am not a licensed doctor. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretend doctor. I, I, I went to the school of Grey's Anatomy, okay? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, so, you know what I mean? Like, don't take my word for the gospel here, you know? You know, just, just saying. But again, that's my humble opinion. You know, you, you have surgery. I feel like that's more strenuous to come back from than, than non-surgery. Uh, physical therapy and surgery. I'm gonna say surgery is more, more, uh, more difficult. So I think it would, it would, it would seem to me that Mitch would need more time or, or, or whatever to come back than Randall. Um, and 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 also Randall is a, he's a specimen that doesn't really miss games, you know. So his, I feel like his body is already used to the grind. It's just getting him back there. And in case you guys didn't know, this is an exclusive from the Organic Fanatics. Julius Randle was the stunt double for King Kong in Godzilla vs. King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> he had the glove and everything. He was the stunt double for the silverback of all silverbacks. King Kong. There you go. I believe it. I was giving it that he was a stunt double. So he's all right. His recovery is going good, apparently. He was in the movie showcase, so... He just went to the world premiere. He's doing all right. <laughs> hey, salute to everybody in the chat. G-Man 70 says they're trying not to risk the shoulder to pop out again. Keith Watkins says as long as they're practicing, we are good. No need to rush them back. Hopefully they can get all, uh, get all, get at least five games. So Keith Watkins says if at least five games would be good. Get some kind of timing, some kind of rhythm prior to the playoffs. Um, G-Man also agrees with that sentiment. Uh, G-Man also says conditioning for Mitch with the foot, he wasn't able to run. So just like what you were saying, they agree with you there. And Mitch, and I agree with you, I, I second your sentiment there. I think because Mitch had an, a season, could possibly a season ending surgery, the fact that when it happened, he's had time to let it heal and recover. I think a couple of games, seven to eight games, to get him some kind of timing, some kind of rhythm, a um, couple of games, not back-to-back -back games. So I think even now, even if it's 10 minutes, uh, that's why I think a game like tomorrow would work well in a game that he doesn't have to play heavy, uh, a game that we could possibly dominate the opponent, considering I think Cade may be out. They got a couple of players that are out tomorrow where it would be a good game where Mitch can go maybe against Duran or just to get some kind of a little cardio run up and down. See how he feels on a lob, check on it the next day, see how he's feeling, see how the foot feels. I think in these kind of games it would help. Uh, so we got Detroit tomorrow, 
Two games after that, we got Toronto, IQ, and RJ. Not sure if they're playing. Salute to IQ, who had, I think, an uncle or a loss in the family. Salute to RJ Barrett, who also had a loss his brother. Our condolences to both of you. A speedy recovery for you both. Um, Toronto Raptors have had, I want to say they've lost almost eight games straight. So they're going on a slump. I right. Is Scotty Barnes back or is he still have the hand thing? I believe he's still recovering. I haven't I haven't watched the ops on that specifically, but I think it was I think he's still out on the hand because I think it was a tear or a break. I thought he broke it, yeah. He broke it, so he might be out still. So I think that's why they went on that slump because RJ was out a couple of games. Now IQ might be missing some, and then on top of that, Scotty Barnes with the injury. And that essentially is their rebuild. Their rebuild is with them. So essentially their three best players are essentially out. Um, so that's something interesting there. So Luke Michael Drake is back. Randall must go do light contact or light otherwise. So Michael Drake says Randall should be doing light work. Um, and then Michael Drake ab- agrees with Teeth. He said Randall with Mitch believe tomorrow night's game. So he might think they they be coming in tomorrow. Tomorrow's night's game would be a good barometer. Next couple of games are a little light minus the last game. So tomorrow we got Detroit. Two games after that we got Toronto. We've been on an eight game slide. Then we got San Antonio Spurs, who's obviously tanking to try to get higher ranking. Um, I would love to see Mitch against Wemby again. I think that would be good, even or even our size, whether it's – I would love to see Mitch and iHeart just body him, you know what I'm saying, push him around. I, I would like for our size to dominate them there. And then I put the last game of this month, which is the 31st, which is next Monday. Or actually, I'm sorry, next Sunday is against OKC. That's a game that I think would be good to see our players back, would be good to see OG back, because OC is OKC is balling. Um, they got possible MVP. Jay Gildress is averaging crazy 30 points a game. I mean, he is chucking up numbers. I think he's one of the steals leaders in the NBA, if not the top four. He's a steals leader, MVP candidate. He is balling out of his mind. I want to say they're one or two in the West. So he's definitely MVP candidate. That'll be a great game. That'll be a good game. If we got Mitch for these next three games, get him in rhythm and get him against. Uh, it'll be a good matchup to see. Get him into some kind of playoff mentality against a good team. That'll be good to see. And then after that, starting April, we only have set eight games left. After... So we're we're cutting it close. We got Miami once in April, April second. We got the Kings three times. We play the Bulls one time. We play Boston, and then we play Brooklyn. Brooklyn, you know Boston is going to rest their players that last game. I, I don't see them. I don't see them playing anybody. Uh, Bulls is down. They 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 are down and out. I don't see Milwaukee the last. They could they could play people, Milwaukee, but I think they might rest their players at last week. So I think April's gonna be rested player type thing where it would actually be good to get our players in rhythm. So the last couple of games in April, I don't see the teams really the playoff team. So if we play the Kings, Kings are gonna be a playoff team. Miami has to play because they need they're fighting for position. So we're gonna be for, Miami's playing everybody. I can't see them sitting anybody out, so April 2nd, it should be us versus Miami. Playoff atmosphere. Everybody trying to get in rhythm. That's going to be probably the last big game before playoffs that I think that everybody's going to be all in. Atmosphere is going to be a little crazy. All the other games I think are going to be rest your players, get ready for playoffs. Did the Celtics clinch the first seed already? Yeah, they're, they're, everybody, top four already clinched. We clinched, playoff berth. Uh, so even even we clinch playoff. So, but we clinch playoff berth. But did we clinch? They but did they clinch the seed? I think this week they. I think they clinched it already. I think by the, the number they hit. I'm not. They haven't clinched it just yet. But I think within the next three games, they they're gonna lock it up for sure. Okay. If they lock it up, resting Porzingis, you're resting Tatum, you're resting Brown. You know what I mean? Like they're gonna get ready to play. So the rest of the way, you're gonna be looking at. So the only real tough game. Maybe OKC because that you know they're gonna try to get in rhythm too, and then after that, I mean, other than the Heat game, 
Sacramento might they might play all in. They might rest players. So you're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games where it could be light, which would be good for Randall, Mitch, OG, us to get some kind of chemistry, get into some kind of rhythm. So April might look favorable for us to get into some kind of rhythm. I don't see where, at least towards the end of April for sure. Bucks maybe, Miami Heat for sure. Miami, uh, Miami Heat is, they're trying to fight. So they 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 don't have time to rest. They don't have the option to rest. A Jimmy Slutter, <laughs> Jimmy Jimmy Jimmy. <laughs> they they can't rest Jimmy. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know what's happening here. Okay. I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to check out now. <laughs> they, they can't rest Jimmy. Jimmy is he's down. So all that to say, I agree with you. I would like to see Mitch up ahead. I definitely think Mitch is one that he needs more rhythm than, than Julius Randall. As long as Julius conditioning is good, which he, you see him doing the running, you see him practicing, he can shoot it. It's off, it's off arm. So as long as he's getting shots and getting into like he does in the summer, getting his shots off, I'm not concerned with Julius Randle. I just want him to be ready and play off. I don't care if he came the last game and just jumped right in. As long as his conditioning is good and he's been getting shots up, I'm straight with that. I I'm good. I'm not too concerned with this role. I agree with you. Mitchell is one that I'm like, yeah, you might want to get a little ready. But we do have Precious. We do have iHeart. So is it, we don't need to rush them in that aspect either. So I agree with the chat. The chat is saying they don't need to rush any of them as long as they're in rhythm. Chemistry is good. We, we're rocking and rolling. So I like that. Um, what about OG? Do you have concern with OG's elbow? Do you think it's a big thing? Because they, they took bone fragments out. Could it be just skin healing? Or do you think it's bigger than that that's going to affect his game? What are your thoughts on OG? And is it a concern for you him missing these games? Do we need him in these games? Or would you prefer three part? Or do you think we just save him like the other players? I gotta give you the extra. I gotta give you more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think it is concerning. I think it is concerning for OG. Um mainly because uh I mean, I, I get it. You just had surgery. It's probably sore and all this extra stuff. But you shouldn't be screaming the way he was when he was trying to swipe at balls and paws no more. But <laughs> but you, you you shouldn't be you shouldn't be having that reaction. You know what I'm saying? Like it. I I I'm I'm worried. I'm worried. Um, with him, I'm more or less like okay if he comes back with like. Five games left, um, even four, three, because, uh, I mean, the record that we have with him in the lineup speaks for itself. I mean, uh, however many games he played out of, like, the 20-something games, 20 games he played, we lost two. So that speaks for itself. He's a very integral in the defense. He's by far the the – if if Jalen Brunson is the engine, then OG is the gas to move the car forward. So, um, again, you want to take your time with him? Perfectly fine. You want to bring him back the fifth game, fourth game, third game, last game? I don't care. As long as he's 100 and ready to go, I'm good with that. I feel like he's the kind of player that you could kind of plug into any system and he fits because – He's not a dominant force on the offense where, like, he needs – he has to dribble, 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 get in rhythm to shoot. No. Like, you go spot him in the corner, give him a nice pass, and he'll 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 bang that shot, you know. He'll cut to the lane if he has a, a lane and then yam it on somebody. He'll He's a good with the hands, so he'll steal the ball. You catch a quick fast break. So, I feel like he's more uh, – with him, I'm not. I'm not worried. I mean, I'm. I'm worried in the, in the sense of 
the elbow. But I'm not worried in the sense of him like having to get into the flow and into the rhythm of things. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it definitely makes sense in the chat. Hey, salute just Nick. Just Nick popped in here. Um, Michael Drake says last year was Miami's year. This year, no, because the playoff window finals is open and you don't get a second time. So you're saying Miami's window to try to make that run like they did last year, like a Cinderella story. That's out out the window. So they got they they got to go all in and, and play. But he's saying that they they don't get they can't. Michael Michael Drake also says OG. I'm not worried. We're winning. Get him ready for the playoffs. So that, that's exactly my sentiment. Like I said, I'm worried about the actual injury because again, he shouldn't be squirming and screaming when he goes and 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 tries to steal the ball or something. But when it comes to like the actual fit, I'm not worried. That man is like seamless, you know. Okay, I agree. And and you you brought it up when you were saying him, uh, the scream out there or the the shout or the pain. That's something that brought your attention to our medical staff and pulled him out. That's something to take a look at and definitely makes uh, a little bit of a concern because, you, you know, but you know, you can have a sharp pain and be like, ay, 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 you know, it's, you know, so I definitely get those. But even in those games, even when he was going through those, even when he had that screen, we still came back into the game, so it was effective. But you also want to save the player from the player. And, and we need him for the playoffs. We need Julius Randle for the playoffs. We need Mitchell Robinson for the playoffs. We're looking at championship or bust. We made the moves for the championship. We traded our future with RJ, Grimes, and IQ for OG and Precious. So we need them for this move, this run. We have an option now where we can make this run. So I think the preservation of these players is important. It might be overlooked by some people because they want them. I need it now. I want it now. <laughs> They're like a, like a three-year-old, give me my bobo. They want it right now. And, you know what I'm saying? Because if you think about it, LeBron James basically out the playoffs. I'm not sure they can make the run. I'm not sure where they're standing. But they're at the bottom of our teams that can really – old school teams, Clippers are up there. Clippers are doing their thing, so they can make a threat. But the teams that are top in the West are young teams. OKC is pretty much a young team. Minnesota's a young team. And, yes, they're good. But we 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 challenge these teams. We played these teams. We've done well against these teams. We beat Denver in the West Coast. So this could be a good shot for the Knicks in the West. Not like LeBron and AD. And I like our chances if we had a matchup with one of those teams. They're young. Yes, they're super talented. They're gonna. It's gonna be a full seven game series. But I like our chances. Fully healthy in a seven-game matchup against any team in the West. Mm -hmm. Much less again against the East. So I think preserving these players as much as we can so they if they if OG had a play with an ay 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 moment, <laughs> I'd rather it in the playoffs than these last rather than these last ten games. I'd rather have the ay 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 in the in the playoffs. Ice it down. I'd rather those than in these last 10. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you're going through, I'd rather have that now. I'd rather have Judas Randall feel some kind of way or soreness in a practice with five on five where they can reevaluate and look at it rather than in a game and re aggravate it or injure it, you know, or have to set out for surgery. I'd rather have that in that scenario. I'd rather Mitch feel that contact pressure or try to dominate in. In a practice, I'd rather him come off the bench in a practice. I'd rather him try that crossover move on I Heart or Wham it on him. So we know he's going to, you know what I'm saying? I, I'd rather that right now, considering how these last games are going to go. If they were high impact, if we were in Miami shoes, salute to Coach Saeed, appreciate you. Appreciate you, sir. Welcome back. Always another faithful organic fanatic. Appreciate you, sir. What up, Coach? What up, Coach? But in these scenarios, I'd rather them be more heavy on practice, reevaluate and evaluate it again, than to push them for now. If we were in the heat position, eighth place, we need what you know what I mean? Like we were struggling to get in the playoffs. I'm gonna need y'all to suit up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I need you guys put on the black tape, put an ice pack on it. You know what I'm saying? The get heat. that little cortisone shot if you got to. 
I I need the heat pack. I need you to be the sponsor for Icy Hot with Shaq. <laughs> I need all that. I need to. We need to get in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? If it's in that scenario, uh, I understand that. The fact that we're fighting for three or four, the fact that you see the development of Deuce McBride coming into the game, holding it down, that we are doing. I mean, the fact that we are winning these games with players that we have. I mean, with the duct tape squad. I mean, we're we're, we're duct taping the duct tape squad. I mean, facts or not? I mean, this is the duct tape squad. We, I mean, we got a hole in our shoes. Wrap that <laughs> duct tape. Somebody get the flex seal, please. <laughs> the flex seal crew. <laughs> flex seal. Hey, slap the tape on that leaky tank. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we doing it. We doing it. I, I'm, I'm with that. I'm with that. Salute to the Flex Seal crew. <laughs> oh, yeah, but all that, yo, all that to say is I'm okay with it. We got Flex Seal, but wait, there's more. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! For just a small payment of 19.99, what do I get? <laughs> you get Josh Hart. And Deuce McBride, 48 minutes, both of them. <laughs> Two for the four first. installments. Four installments of 1999. That's all you need. <laughs> Two 48 minute installments. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Yo, we hold it on. We 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 still we got two people and we still went left. How that happen? <laughs> Even with two people, saucy Sunday never failed. <laughs> Saucy Sunday is always gonna go left. No matter oh. what. Hey, so hey, salute to two shots. It was gonna be a solo dolo podcast. So I appreciate you, my brother, for always coming through. My brother, I appreciate you not leaving me hanging. And I would have done it. I would always done it, but it's always more entertaining with my money talk. Always appreciate that. Absolutely. I appreciate the invite, man. Always, but you know, you're already a, you're already a regular. This is you, my guy. This is us. You in there. You are I got a, I got a seat at the table now? You're an organic fanatic. It's you, my guy. Pull up your chair. My guy, I'm still with you for my uh my bobblehead uh what do you call it intro? What do you call it? <laughs> oh, we, I, 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 I mean my my uh what do you call it? The the fat heads with the with the stickers and all that. What do you call that? You gotta get to then get your little name engraved in, in the back. I'm saying, bro. I'm saying I'm waiting on it. And Keith Walker says, guys, for the first time in over 25 seasons, we are a legit contender. I'd rather take it slow and make sure that we're fully healthy. I was three years old the last time they won. I don't want them to rush. That's that's. A I feel thing. that. I feel that in my soul. That, 100%. That, cut, that cut deep, Keith. That, <laughs> that hit me right here, bro. Bro. I'm 30, I'm about to be 36. And the only times that I remember like a winning season was Mello and and maybe like the tail end of the Ewing years. After that, we talking about the David Lees, the Jamal Crawfords, the Chris Duhans. Yeah, the the Tony the Tony Douglases, you remember that? Oh my God! Come on, come and then on. we got and then we got Raymond Felton. You know what I'm saying? Over the, the hill, J Kid. Listen, we're past the Barnyani. The, the Barnyani. Oh my God! We're, we're we're past all them years. Wow! Hey, salute to Trey and Terry because you know why. We here. Salute to Trey. They, they, that was their joint. Trey and Terry, salute to y'all. That was their joint. We here. And everybody ran with it. But they've been saying it for a long time. Salute to Trey and Terry. We here now. We are a championship contender. Salute to Key Walker. And he's right. We are in a win now mode. So do you rush the process or do you take your time wherever you settle into the playoffs or whoever you are? Which is why you're seeing the 48 minutes. Two shots. You're seeing 48 minutes because we're trying to let the others get be ready. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We're letting them be ready as much as Tim doesn't want to play in 48. But listen, you remember when you was 21? You can run for seven hours straight. <laughs> Still go clubbing. 
come back and play two full courts after that. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Good. And then and then get four hours of sleep and do it again the next day. Break night, go to work and school and do it the next day. You good. Deuce is good. Deuce got yeah. all of Hashtag Deuce McBrain. That's what I'm calling him. Deuce McBrain, the little brain. Keep it going, brother. Even though you can't see, is that one little braid? Hey, maybe it helps him, like, get the shot. Hope... <laughs> so, like, that's, that's the aim in the gun. <laughs> the aim in the gun, bro. Maybe the braid is the, is the front side post. I think yeah. the braid is the front side post lining up. However it works for you, dead eye, whatever you call it. Get it done, my guy. Listen, right. I'm going a, to I'm a, I'm a respectfully call him Trace. Because I... I just love that. that. And he got such a high arcing shot, bro. It's smooth. I love that. That's, yo, you, yo, he is shooting behind the fro. You know how high you got to go back to, to go behind You know how far back you got to go? <laughs> and it does, he doesn't even touch the hair. You ever seen that? It's like, yo, how you go so far back and the hair's up here and you don't even touch it? And then he got yeah. the little flick. It's a little flick of the wrist. Flick of the, flick of the wrist. Flick of the, flick of the wrist. Hey, hey! <laughs> yeah, yeah. He got a beautiful shot, man. And, and I'm telling you, it's like it, it takes like a second just to reach the peak, and then it just like <sighs> straight yeah, in. Nobody, yo, nobody's come close to blocking that shot because of that arc. Nah, he got a crazy arc, man. And then like he got he got a, a big wingspan too. So that's part of the reason why he could get back all the way without hitting his hair, and then you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Hey, hold on! Uh, oh my goodness! Hey, salute to the new Knicks! Hey, uh, my brother couldn't make it today because he's out here grinding for the Rillionaires. Really You're on YouTube, Google YouTube Rillionaires. Really uh, salute to Black Empire. Salute to them. They're trying to do big things, getting their music out. Salute to them out there, Black Empire. Hey, young boys is doing it. Latino music, hip hop. Uh, check them out. Support the support the crew. Check out Black Empire and Really Nares Entertainment. They're doing their thing. They're building the studio. Salute to the new Knicks. I know you couldn't be here. You tried. I know you was in it. So salute to you out there. Um, and stay on the grind, brother. Okay, doing this thing. Crack ruined the Knicks in the eighties. Damn, coach bring it back. He said, "Crack ruined the Knicks in the 80s. <laughs> he he watched the crack era. Listen, that that was before my time. I was born '88, so before people, my time. Listen, when you were born, people were hitting the pipe for seven years. <laughs> 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 On the pipe, hey, I was in the Bronx, abandoned buildings. We were still graffitiing. I was still young, but hey, nonetheless. Man, I just missed it, man. I just missed it. Uh, Michael Drake says, "I believe uh, we're grinding so hard this year that it was tough schedule." Earlier in the year, yes, sir. Uh, Michael Ray Richards and Ray Whittem, damn, these guys are taking it back. So, uh, Michael Drake says that this year is is a championship window. So again, we traded our young players, which we all love. We wanted the young players to go. We said earlier in all our podcasts, if you go back to podcast one, season two, we we're all for the young crew. But it, we said it was an evaluation year to see how they do, how they're going to perform. Uh, RJ started out good. And so we made that move on there. Very interesting. Now, Michael Drake, I don't know about that. Hold on. Salud, manito. Uh, Paula not here. Uh, so he talked. I don't even. I didn't even go to Kevin Durant this summer. Oh my God, Michael Drake, you bring up Kevin Durant this summer if the Suns explode in the playoffs. I could it be? No, um, nah, man, nah. Keep that. He's a. He's a. I mean, no, no disrespect to Durant. He's obviously a generational talent, but I feel like uh, we don't need him. We don't need him. He doesn't want us. And and why? Like, what do you, you're gonna you're gonna have to make space for him because that's the max contract. So how you, how you gonna fit that in the books? Like, uh, I'm good on Durant. Yeah, I'm, I'm good on Durant too. Durant, you think he's gonna give up bread to join the team? And you. Nah. And you was all talking the Knicks ain't cool, but not nah, we don't want you, bro. We'll yeah, yeah. If he would have now, now if this was five, six, seven years ago, I'm all in on Durant. But now I'm I'm good on him. I'm 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 past him. Now now my focus is on uh as we all know, 
your boy Donovan Mitchell. Um, I mean, I like I like uh, Mikhail Bridges too, but I just feel like that's not gonna happen. Uh, so if I had a choice, if I ha if I had my choice, it would be Donovan Mitchell. I believe a backcourt of JB and Mitchell is, and it's, it's just gonna be electric. And I don't care. Don't talk. Don't don't miss me with the whole. Oh, he did have Garland. Blah blah blah. blah. I don't care. That's that's their situation. Their situation is different. It's a different team. I feel like they're soft. We we got the the gritty New York defense. I just feel like it's gonna be a different outcome if you got two offensive juggernauts like that, and then you got a third wheel in Randall that's like bully ball city. So I don't know. I just feel like it's, it's it'll be better. I was I was waiting for you, coach. I was waiting. I saw that. I knew that was coming. <laughs> well, well, what's up? What's up, coach? Talk to me. When Mike Rodriguez says Durant, I knew coach was coming with it. Oh, okay. He loves cat. He's sick. Oh. <laughs> I, I was waiting for it. I knew it. I said the minute Michael J says the rant, <laughs> coach is already typing in there. Okay, listen, uh nobody's coming. Nobody's coming. They, they're not cat. Oh. There's no now this and and a Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell, they both run out in two years. They both mm -hmm. have there's something to think about. So this and Donovan Mitchell is more realistically not happening for two years. By that time, we have at least one ring. Just throwing it out there. By that time, we have at least one ring, and then we can reevaluate Ben. I'm, I'm, that's I'm, that's the bold prediction. Hey, we got at least one, at least one, one, one and two, one and two years. That's what I'm calling it. So this, it's not so far. He and Mitchell. What they have to do in order for them to come is to say, I'm not resigning with whoever you trade me. That's the only way he comes and Mitchell, whoever you trade me to, I'm not resigning. If that doesn't happen, I'm not extending. If they don't say that, don't bring it up. Don't talk about it. We could have got him, but the minute Grimes was gone, our trade chip, Grimes would have been the only youth it was gone for the most part. Go I'm gonna say something controversial right now. We still got one more trade chip, and that is Trace. Who? Trace. Trace McBride. This nigga said Trace. <laughs> you said Trace. Trace Deuce. He trades McBride. Trey McBride? This Trey, whatever. Three point McBride. Not two, three. You can't take away from the math to add to the math. Like, the reason you get him is we are a defensive juggernaut. You got Deuce at a suit. You have to make the money match, first of all. Let's, let's go there. You have to make money match. He's making 90 for two more years. You're looking at 20 plus. And you got to make the math work, bro. You can't just say, I'm going to trade Hulk Hogan for, you know what I'm saying? Hold like, on. You just say he's available in two years. In two, but if he's available, you don't have to trade anybody. That's what I said. He could, he had two more years for Brooklyn. If Brooklyn trades him, whoever team he goes to, who, like if they're going to trade for, for, for him, they're going to say, yo, I'm going to trade these so and so for Duke McBride, but he has to do an extension. I want him to do it do a sign and trade. That's where sign and trade happens. He has to sign for a three, four year, whatever. And he's like, yo, whoever you trade me to, I'm not signing. I'll be there to the end of my contract and I'm out. And I'm gonna do whatever I decide on doing at that point. So if he's if he lets Brooklyn know that, no other team is really gonna make a major trade for him, like how they did for Donovan. They'll just trade for him, hope they can lure him to keep him. And then he gets, says, I want to be a free agent. Oh, then hold on. Hold on. I got you. I got you. I got you right now. We got uh, Basura and, 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 and Bogey. Would Brooklyn take Bogey and Basura for him? But that's with, with, with the chip of uh, trades. It, 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 it would take them, Brooklyn, to say, I'll take the two pieces of trash plus whatever picks. I said we gave them. Seven first, which obviously is not. 
They're not going to do it. First of all, I'm going to tell you why. But, but I'm throwing in my I'm throwing in my young piece. I, and listen, I hear you, but you know why I say no? Because Brooklyn was offered. Are you hearing this? Brooklyn was offered from Houston. Jalen Green and a couple of first rounds from Houston. Who's at the mm -hmm. bottom? I mean, that would miss, have you, miss you, me you, with you, that. Miss me because because you you switched up the whole scenario. You said I'm not I'm not going to resign nowhere except New York. No, I'm just saying. I'm saying Brooklyn turned down to trade him from Houston. Yeah. Houston uh, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what they want at this point. They got to take what we can give them because he's only going to resign with us. Right. All that to say is who we have now is who we are going to be for the next two years. Bogey and Burks is gone. That bread is going to be for Precious. We already signed Deuce for three years. We already got, I think, Sims for one more year and then to pay iHeart. Everybody we have now is who you're going to look at for the next two years. Who we have now is our team for the next two years. And then you're going to repay OG. Nobody else. Everybody else is waiver wired. So in the summertime, don't say we need to draft anybody. We're not drafting anybody. Don't say you need a pick or trade anybody. We're not trading anybody. How much is how much is Sims making? Who? I Sims. think he got three or six mil, something like that. It wasn't much, but more than what he would have got in the G League. He got so 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 Bogey and, and Burks are what? Let's say conservative twenty five? When he's about 27 to 35. 27 to 35. 27 to 35. Above, okay. Bogey's 19, depending if you weigh the, the kind of what, it, what his money's worth. Close above it. It's about 19 for him. And then Alec Burke is 10 mil that expires this year. So you get rid of Burke at the end of this year for that's free 10 mil. Then you got Bodega. If there is a trade, the reason we got Bodega, if there is someone out there that we can go after, i.e. him or anyone else, if there's someone out there, $19 million is exactly his bread. If which That's he what he's making now? He's making 19 now. Next year, if we keep him, there's a $2 million option where we can keep them for two mil or we could give them the 19. If there's someone to trade to match money, that bodega 19 mil, him, Mitchell, you need money to work. So you that's why they traded for Bodega. Because he has one more year. Wait, hold on. You said him and Mitchell. Isn't Mitchell making like 30? I meant him and Burks. I apologize. I meant him and okay. Burks. Okay. Okay. Burks money is 10 mil that comes off the books this year. So that's 10 million dollars. That frees us up $10 million to pay Precious, to pay iHeart, to pay OG, whatever that is. If there's an so, option, you either use Bodega's 19 if you're going to trade somebody or you waive him, and then 19 pays Precious, iHeart, or whatever. So you either use them to pay these players, or you can use that $19 million to match salary plus picks and get someone, and then you can pay the other guys and be over the cap. That makes sense. That makes sense. So, um, real realistically, so I was going. My route was was Mitchell because Mitchell was 30, 30, 35. So if 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 Bum and and Bodega make 30, 35, again with the caveat that they say I'm only going to resign in New York. Again, they have to take what we give them. So if if you wanna if you wanna make the pot a little sweeter. You can even throw in like a Sims or a Deuce or whatever, plus picks, and then, you know, that'll be that'll be what you need to get either your boy or or Mitchell. But if they say they only want to play for New York, and you know that, why would you give more to Brooklyn? The put you got all the weight. You know what I'm saying? You got. I'm not giving you anybody. I'm not. That's 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 my point. That's I'm, my point. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you Bodega and Burks, so you got 27 mil to free up, and I'll give you three first, two unprotected, one protected. You you get you free up 27 mil. You can do what you want with that, and then you get for some picks. In that aspect, you can do it if they say either him or Mitch. I'm not going to nobody but New York. No one else. Is gonna give a better package than what we get off right at that point. 
That's what I'm saying. That's what I. That's like. So you made my point for me. That's what I'm saying. I agree with you. Yeah, I'm saying. But the reality is, all that to say is, don't get your hopes up. That's probably not going to happen until the end of next year. So you still got a whole other year before that even dream scenario can happen. All that to say is, whoever we have now, everybody on our team, this very moment is going to be on our team next year. Mine is Bodega and Bird. That's the only caveat. Everybody else is on our team. Everybody. So you're, saying, so you're saying by the end of this year, regardless of the fact, we're going to have about 30 to play with. Yes. For sure, 10. Now, again, depending on availability of said star or someone out there, if you see... And here's, a, here's, a, here's how you're going to know. If you see us extend Bodega to his 19 mil, if we extend that 19 mil, then you know we're looking for somebody. If we don't extend him, then that's freeing up money to pay everybody else. If he gets extended for 19 mil, we already have somebody in mind. But Bum is, is out regardless, you said, right? Burks, 10 million, we're not going to re-sign Burks for 10 million. We'll give him a vet minimum next year if he wants to be on the team. After that 10 mil, we'll waive him. You get vet minimum. Do you want to play first? Yes or no? That's it. And he, you're probably not going to get minutes anyway. You get vet, vet minimum, you get 2 million. If we but want then, to- So my thing is that's the wasted 10 mil if you don't use it, right? No, because you need that money to, to re-sign iHeart. You need that money to, to re-sign Precious. You need don't that- we have his bird rights? Who's bird rights? iHeart. Yeah, but he's, he's going to be due for bread, bro. You got to pay him. Right, but we have his bird rights. You have his bird rights, but you need to still come up with money to pay him. My, yes. my point in saying that is you, you can you can still make the money move now for Mitch or, or your boy, and then with his bird rights, you can still yeah. re-up and go above the salary. Yes. If someone comes available, make it worth it for you to pay over. If someone becomes available, that Dolan says, you know what, I'm going to pay whatever, and we're going to pay over the salary cap. Until then, you can, they're going to try to stay under the salary cap. Unless someone becomes available, Mitch or him or whoever that person is, then Dolan says, sign whatever you got to pay for these dudes. I'm going to pay over the salary cap. We'll be over the cap. We'll be paying all extra taxes. But now we have all these players plus... And now, and now we have a window. Now we have a window. Right. We technically have a window now under under the cap. So with who we have now, we're under the cap which is incredibly smart to have all the players we have now and be under the cap, which is not often you can say that. That's why we're in a win now. Michael Drake saying the the win now. We're in a win now window, being under the cap, which is crazy. Normally you're already over the cap on a win now situation. That's why we're talking about not rushing the players. That's why everybody we have now, we're still under the cap by quite a bit. And even if we just wave Burks, we'll still be millions under for the most part. So that's why you're looking at that aspect being under the radar. Even for a year or two with who we have now, we can re-sign everybody and still be just under the cap and still be in a contend situation unless somebody comes up. So the key factor is Bodega. When you see Bogey with a Stogie, if you see an extension from the $19 million, that's going to be the key for you guys. If you see we extend as $19 mil, we have somebody already in mind we want to go after because we're going to use that for leverage. You understand? That That's going to be the factor going forward. Uh, there's no way we get cap space this summer. Precious gets $4 million, Give him another $4 million. I agree with that. 15 for Hart or 8 for Precious. And I agree with your guys' numbers. Uh, I'm just saying. Uh, Burks Wait, what number? What number? So let me go back because there's a lot of info here that the guys are saying in the chat. Uh, I don't see the Knicks keeping both iHeart and Precious. I beg to differ. I think we keep both. Um, Precious, so, and that was, hold on. So Coach says, let me go back because there's a lot here. We, we gave a lot of info, so the chat's going in. Uh, Coach, Listen, I'm not, I'm not sold on Precious, bro. I feel like we could let him go. I yeah. mean, I like him. I like him. Don't get me wrong. But if, you, if you're going to give me an option between Precious and whoever else we decide to resign, and your homeboy or Mitch, I'm I'm going your homeboy or Mitch. 
in all honesty, Precious is statistically better. It, then who? In, in the games that let's okay, let's talk about the games that Precious has played. In the games Precious has played. Hold on, hold on. Better than who? Statistically, what he contributes to the team, I think he's better than what Macau was right now. Right now. Right now. For what we need, listen to what I'm saying before you misconstrue it. For what we need for this very moment, rebounding, blocking, offensive rebound, I think Precious has given us statistically more for what we need for a better value. And I and I love Macau. Facts and I, I bring up the, I bring up the trade for Macau with you and Raw. Yes or no? I bring up. I'm telling you, I I brought it up. I I came up with a scenario. But right now, you you can't let go of Precious. You can't. Precious is giving you Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo value right now. You, that that's almost unarguable. Now, what he can bring defensively at the position he plays. It would be elite, and you move Precious down for this moment and the value. Precious is 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 a bigger resign than him, right now. You can get Precious a lot cheaper. He was giving you was okay. Yes or no? You guys in the chat too. Was Precious giving you Mitchell Robinson I heart numbers when he was playing? Yes or no? Offensive rebound and blocking. Sure, I'll give you that. He's giving yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, you got and, it. Okay, and Mitch was giving you all NBA numbers in the beginning of the season. I heart all NBA numbers to the point that we're saying I heart needs a massive pay, and you're getting it for someone that you got in the trade for a low amount of money. So we got pressures at a Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo value for offensive rebound and blocking. I think he's more important currently. So how we have what we have existing is more important than going after bridges. And if I'm wrong, we would have gone after Mark. That's why remember Leon Valley. And I'm do I not look I have the picture up. I sold you guys, I talked to you guys about getting him. I and I love and I think he would fit. But remember, Leon is about the dollars. The dollars gotta work. He's never ever overpaid. And he's not going to. Right now, Precious is the guy that's got to get paid. Burks is going to be bogey. Burks and bogey is gone. That's what Michael Drake says. Uh, OG Ananobi, 25 mils for four years, 100 mil. I don't know about the money. I agree with you guys. He's going to get 25 for four? When he was asking, wasn't he asking for 40? Drake, that's what Michael Drake says. OG, 25 mil, four year, 100 mil. He said he would take less, though, if he got to New York. He would take less. He's going to take half less, you think? I mean, it could maybe a five-year. could be a five-year. Remember, his agent is Leon's son. His agent is Leon's son. Respectfully, I'm, I'm, if he's going to take less, it's going to take. It's going to be like five mil less. Probably, I'll go with 35. I, I can see 30. I can see 120. I can see him getting RJ's number. 120, 125. I can see that. RJ, RJ got 120. 100 to 120 with incentive. Remember, incentive based too. So play. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I'm just going by reports that he was wanting 40. So listen, I, I want a Lamborghini, my guy. <laughs> like, like, no, but yo, but but hold on. If you if you come into the table wanting 40, and then you say, my guy, 18 and two, with my my plus minus being whatever the heck it is. That that that's 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 hard numbers to back it up. It is, but remember, it's also a fit, and I'm not debating you. I agree with you. I agree How is OG you. not the best fit? He is for us. If he goes somewhere else, would he fit and produce those same type of numbers with other teams? Not saying he won't, but he wasn't doing it in Toronto, right? In Toronto, he wasn't giving those same numbers. With us, he was. Sometimes us as Knicks, we overvalue our players, and I'm not saying it. I'm not saying you're wrong. I, I agree with you. I think he for us, he is the absolute perfect fit. Which is why you're seeing those numbers that you're talking about. But overall, you still got to look at like IQ. IQ wanted 120 in Toronto. Was he going to get 120? I, I told you I would have. I told you know I would have. I would have gave him his money before we even signed Brunson because I was on that full rebuild, if you remember. 
Yeah, but do you think full rebuild is better or where we're at now contending? I'm I'm not I'm not gonna play I'm not gonna play the if game because I don't know. Come on, play the game with me. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I can't I can't play the if game. There's too many variables. But I will say this. I will say this. Where we are now, I'm very happy. And I, and I hope IQ gets paid because I've been I've been singing his praises for forever. He deserves his money. He's worth it. Okay. And they're going in on the chat. I I'm just saying that who we have now is more than likely who you're gonna see for at least two years. I, I'm not next summer we really can't go for anyone because you gotta pay who we have. Do you think we do you think iHeart is worth a paycheck? Yes or no? Yeah. Do you think Precious or two of what he's done this year is worth a paycheck? Yes or no? Okay, Let, I'll give you. I'll give you the so so. Do you think OG is worth a paycheck? Yes or no? Those three are the only one left for paychecks for the rest of for all our, compared to all our team. Everyone else has been paid. So listen, the, OG, OG, and 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 I heart the juice is worth the squeeze. But precious, I'm not saying. Oh, listen, I'm not saying precious needs a big paycheck. I'm just saying, do you think we're paying to keep them? I'm not saying it has to be extensive. Give me, give me a number, because I don't think I'm going past ten. Let's say three year thirty, three year thirty two. That that that's like like that's like the most I would pay him. Like yeah. you're at the, you're at that breaking point where it's like if I add a cent to that, I'm saying no. So what what did what did Mitchell Robinson get? Four years, but 60. that's different, bro. Like, but let me let me hit the hold on. Mitch got four years, sixty, right? Right. Four years. Tell me the body of work of Precious in Toronto compared to Mitch. Precious in New York has averaged double doubles and averaging two blocks per game in all the games he played. Double doubles and two blocks per game, and most of those rebounds are five or more offensively. That's equivalent to or better than what I heart admits right now. It's a small body of work. I'm not saying he's better. And than he's him. getting what forty something minutes when he's doing this? Uh, no, twenty five to thirty minutes. Twenty five to thirty. Now, Listen, a ten is the absolute max I'm going for this guy, and I don't even know if I'm doing that. Do you think? I don't know, man. He to me, he's a baby bam. To me, you have to pay him. He's he, bro. This no, is, not even close. Bam got the mid range game on lock, and then he got the paint on lock. You can you don't get that from Preston. You barely get a three point shot from Preston. What's what's what is he a thirty percent three point shooter? He's probably equivalent to what Bam is at three point right now. But but that's not Bam's game. That's Preston's game. But that's not Bam's game. You got someone who's played forever in the Heat, six, seven, eight years. Don't give me that, bro. You, we we talk the numbers, and that's it. Okay, so you don't think Bam is worth? I mean, uh, Precious is worth thirty, forty mil? Nah, man, I'm not going that high. I'm not going that high. I'm 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 in the range of five to ten. If you want to re up, five to ten, take it or leave it. Who who backs up? Who backs up Randall? You can you can get any power forward like from the waiver wire, somebody that's still trying to squeeze out a couple years in their career. This man plays forty minutes, bro, and he's a tank, and he's good for it for seventy five, eighty games. If there was someone in the waiver wire, we would have got him already. That's what I'm saying. You could you could still do it though, like bro. I like I'm not again. I, this is just the name. I'm not saying this is the name I would go for. But you got Boogie Cousins still out there balling out. Yeah. Again, again, again. I'm just throwing the name because it's the first one that came to mind. But there's always a power forward out there that you can spell Randall eight minutes a night. Espérate, espérate. Un momentico, espérate. Tú me estás diciendo, yeah, Boogie Cousins right now is better than Preston? What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, again, Boogie was the first name that came to mind because I like Boogie's game. He's a bully ball. He got the three-point. He got the rebounds. He got the defense. 
Boogie gives you everything you need, and you don't need him to play 40 minutes. He'll play that 10 minutes a night, and he'll be effective 10 minutes a night. And that's what you need. Instead of getting this dude for 10 million, you could get Boogie for two. And he'd be happy doing it. And again, that's that's not the that's not the name that that's the, just the first name that came to mind. I gotta see the list. I gotta see who's out there. I gotta see, you know what I mean? Like I gotta actually do my homework. There's nobody. I went the only other person that's even remotely close to being, and I looked at it, is Dwayne Dedman at best. Maybe Rudy Gay who's out there. Listen, you can do you can do you remember the Warriors where they where they had the championship window and they had old man David West as the power forward and he took over young boy David Lee. We could have a situation like that. David West could shoot. David Lee couldn't. That's the they needed a shooter for, at that position. We and you don't think we need a shooter? When we you don't think Boogie shoots? Boogie cannot rebound and he can't defend. We are a defensive team. That's the reality of the case. We are a defensive team, and you need defensive and rebounding prowess. And that's what Precious gives you. He defends, he rebounds, and he blocks. Listen, don't Detroit got like a bunch of six, eight dudes that are on the bench? You want to you wanna take another flyer on, uh, what's his name, the kid that was here, number 20? Uh... Nobody's better than Precious on no, nobody you can name. Duran, was it Duran? Duran that we gave him the pick is not better than Precious. He's not better than Precious. All right, bro. All right. We'll come back and revisit that, but he's not better than Precious right now. And I'm not saying the Precious is a starter. But again, from what I'm saying, he fits our team. At least for the next two years, you're not going to see anybody other than who we have right now on this team. And if they do, they're going to be waving pom pom. Is my opinion. That's it. They're gonna be with pom poms. They get. They're gonna have the the seat warmers to warm the. Bench. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You know what I'm gonna do for you? I'm gonna do my homework tonight. Next Sunday. And then I'm. Next Sunday. And then and then next Sunday when I come in the pod, I'm gonna bless you with some names. I'm gonna hold you to it. Okay. But but I'm gonna do my homework and 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 I'm and I'm gonna I'm gonna do it so good that. Even the chat is gonna agree with me. And chat, your homework assignment is, and and if you if you got an opinion right now, let me know. Do we sign prices? What would you sign prices to, in amount? And is there someone out there in the waiver wire? I will let him answer. But is there anyone in the waiver wire, or who you think that would be better? It could be it could be somebody that's gonna be a free agent next year too, right? I'll allow. I'll allow. Sure. Sure. Okay. 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 There you go. Nobody can tell me five million more of NBA champion series is not even close. Uh, any team make his own price. Precious, yes, no more than ten. I heart, I said sixteen million. So Michael Drake says no more than ten. So you guys don't think that that put, I I mean I'm shocked at this. I, I I'm not doubting it, but That's you don't true. think you guys don't think Precious is worth ten mil a year? That that ten is like. Like he is, he is maxing out the money that I give him at ten. And I, I can agree, ten would be the max. I can agree that ten would be the max. You let's say, and I still second guess that. Would you say three years, twenty four, eight mil a year? Three years, twenty four, with a thirteen team team option. Three years, twenty four mil. I think that's a respectable price. That is respectable. If you want to do it even better for me. You could do it kind of like descending. So you could give him like okay. 10 the first, then like eight the second, and six the last. Then that then that's more, then that's more, then that's more my ballpark right there. Okay. So uh 10 is uh, a lot for Michael Drake. Coach says but ten, 10 is a lot, bro. And even eight is kind of like, eh, I don't know. I'm valuating it off his production. So from this production that he's had, there's a time that he got burned. And I get it. Prior to playing with us, bro, you're lucky you're getting three. And in all honesty, for real. I mean, in Toronto, you was getting no burn. You're you're on that Sims level right now. You get three years. You get me? Yeah. Seven mil for three years. But based off what he's done, 
in different rotations with our starters, with our bench. He's hit threes. He's defending top. I think he's earned a little paycheck. Maybe I might be on the high side with a 28. Maybe three. And, and I, I like Coach's number. I think Coach uh, was a coach. Three-year, 18 mil. Three-year, 18 comes out to what? Like six? Six, six a year? See, now we're talking. Now we're cooking with some grease. So I I, I, I think I'm willing to do that. I, I, no, I'm sorry, G Man, G Man. Let me get it. G Man 78 said it. G Man 78 says three years, 18 now. G Man, um, G Man, I see you, brother. You, I, me and you, we were right here. I, I ain't mad at that number. I ain't mad at that number. Now, let me ask you this Do you think Precious makes Sims obsolete? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can definitely use Sims as another trade chip. He's young, he's hungry. He wants to prove himself. He's cheap. Again, I mean, if you're if you're coming to me again, at me as the GM, I have an affinity for Mitchell. So I'm gonna do whatever in my power to get Mitchell. So that means Bum and Bodega, right? You we said it was somewhere around 30. Then you throw in Sims, and and if you wanna if you wanna entice them even more, throw in Deuce. So we're somewhere in the range of 35, 40 at that point. And at that point, that should be more than enough to get the deal done because I believe Mitch is somewhere around the 30 range. But if they're still like, no, nah, no, nah, I need a little more because I gave up, you know, half the squad for Mitch. Then you say, okay, I'll throw in two or three first round picks. Unprotected, not protected, we can work that out later. But that to me sounds like a, Chef's kiss, and then you get, then you get your, your all NBA backcourt, which again is going to be unstoppable, and then you slide Devo back to the bench, which I believe would be the best role for him. Then you obviously put OG and Randall and iHeart. Then you got, then you got a very solid starting five. And then you got a super solid bench. But that's just me. And then obviously you could, if you want, you can pick up uh, a service of a point that, you know, like a uh, Kyle Lowry type, you know, just a journeyman at that point. You don't need him to be all flashy and blah, blah, blah. You just need him to direct the offense and let Devo go off and let, you know, iHeart or Mitch, whoever, go off. And Precious at that point, if he's still here, is going to go off. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's, again, if you – that's, 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 that's my dream scenario. But, you know, it is what it is. I don't know. I could be wrong. Hey, salute Michael Drake and everybody in chat. Coach, G-Man. Uh, Michael Drake says that uh, that he's currently – that Precious is currently getting four, four million or four years, 16 mil. So four years, 16 mil. He's currently getting four right now. He could re up for that, and I'll be good with it. Okay. And then Coach says that Sims is just a body. <laughs> Sims can go back home, so Coach is not feeling him. And then Michael Drake says Sims is not just a body, and Sims will get better. Sims is good, and I like Sims. I think Sims has improved uh, defensively. I like how we're, his foot, he's not jumping for everything. But I would like to see a an iHeart floater uh, in the paint. It's like he's too timid. He shies off kind of like Deuce, and he defers to whoever else is out there. And I understand. I'm lucky I'm getting minutes. These other guys are the dudes. But to have a little confidence in the, the little baby hook that he has. I've seen him with a little baby hook. A yeah, little, you got the little. A little teardrop, something. Just something that when you're in that paint, make the move. I, I would like for him to see that because he's a four-year college player. This is his second going on third year if I'm not mistaken for the Knicks. So he's not that young to where you have to start now and showing something. So this would be a year that I would I would like this offseason in the summer for him to show get something in his bag. You know what I'm saying? So that so that point I like. Burks is an expiring you can't use him in a deal. And I yeah I agree with you coach. I, I know he's you, you can't use that's why I said it's tens, ten millions off the books. So you're counting that 10 mil we're waving you. 
We keep that 10 mil. That 10 mil is somehow going to go into iHeart and uh, um, this guy's money. So maybe 8 mil for uh, iHeart and 2 for Precious somehow. They use that 10 mil for whatever salaries they got. And then Bodega is the big question mark. Bodega would be if if somebody's out there that we would want to get, we're going to tell by the re-signing of Bodega or we waive, we only keep his two mil. Because only two mil is guaranteed for next year. So if we just guarantee the two mil and that frees up the other money, then that lets you know we're paying everybody else and we still keep them as an emergency break in case of emergency that we gave them only the two mil. But if we re-sign to that 19, somebody else is out there we're going after. That's how you'll know out there. So great show so far uh, for you guys out there. We got uh, the game tomorrow. We got Detroit. What are your thoughts against Detroit? Is it a win against Detroit, even though they're they're, they're down bad? I don't even think Cade Cunningham's playing tomorrow. I don't think your boy Ivy's playing tomorrow. I think he, they're, they're both uh, – there's an injury out there. What are your thoughts against uh, Detroit? And do we see Mitch? Uh, yeah, man. So, uh, I don't want to disrespect Detroit. I mean, again, these are 400 to 450 of the best players in the world. This is the league, as Raw likes to say. And there's reason behind that, you know. Uh, somebody catches fire, and then before you know it, we're down 20. But uh, this, is a, this, this should be a win. I'm, I'm expecting a win, uh, if I'm being real. Um, especially now that you said that Cunningham is out in Ivy. Um, I don't even know who their point guard is at this point, and it it doesn't really matter. Uh, what are they, like 7 and like 50 or something at this point? A little to a lot. That's what they are. They're, they're... <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm expecting a W, but again, I'm, 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 I'm going to be cautiously optimistic because this is the league. Okay. I respect your integrity as a man and respecting others. I'm going to go the opposite. If you guys saw that short that I did when I was at the junkyard, I was looking for Detroit, and there was no motors in any of those cars at the junkyard. I don't think the Motor City has anything. I think their pistons are seized and locked up. They got five. <laughs> There's no oil in the motor. They're, they're, they're not doing it. I think it's a body bag. I think it's – and, yes, I understand it's another team. I do respect that in an aspect. I'm not dissing in any way. But I think we're beyond the point of being nice. I think we got to get geared up for the playoffs. I think you're going to see another 48 by Deuce. I think we're just going to try to put the pedal to the metal. We need these Ws. I think we're half a game up to third. And we need these wins. So this is not a time to play around. This is a time that we got to go put our foot on their necks, get some – Nick Swagger, and time to get at it. I got a W with Detroit. I think we get a clear body. I think we're going to call the coroner. He's going to come outline the body. He's going to zip him up. He's going to toe tag him and back him. Listen, I got to call a spade a spade. And guess what? The deuce of spades is going to get called out. Mm. Doing it, okay? Deuce what you, what you doing? You, you, so you're going, uh, you're taking the over on the 20? I got a north of 20. North of 20 on the W. I got a north of 20. Michael Drake says 25. I think he's talking about the age of, of Sims on there. We'll get it. Okay, so before I mean, I mean, uh, I mean point differential. Like we're gonna beat them by more than 20. I got I got us more than I'll put it this way. I got us more than 15. I won't put it a lot, but you know, I'll I'll say 15. I'll take that back. I'll take the under. You take the under 15. All right, I got the over on them. And we're going to go through a couple of games only because by next Sunday, 7 p.m. game against OKC. So we'll be broadcasting next week when you give us your uh, looking at the waiver wire free agent <laughs> to your homework prior to that OC, OKC game. Then we got Wednesday, we got against Toronto. They're on a slide. Do you think we win against Toronto? That should be a win also. Um I was I was reading somewhere or I seen it in a video or something I can't remember right now uh, where IQ is hurt is he is he really hurt IQ I don't think he's hurt I think his his uncle passed and he oh snap okay 
his uncle passed. I believe it's his uncle. Forgive me if I'm incorrect, but I, I know someone in his family or someone he knew was a coach or somebody passed. So he's familiar, but I think he's going to play. I don't think okay. he's I think he plays. And, and so he's going to play? Is RJ going to play? I'm not. I think RJ is still grieving, to be honest. I mean, I was his younger brother. I haven't, I'm, if I'm going to be honest, I haven't been watching the outfit Toronto. But if I'm not mistaken, I have not seen him play. I'm not sure if he'll be back by that time frame, especially with the Knicks that may bring up, you know what I mean? It may be too much attention brought to him with his brother because, you know, when Knicks film the media, I think that may be a lot for RJ as far as attention this yeah. year, this soon. So I don't, yeah. I don't think he's playing against him because the media and asking him and his brother and, you know what I mean? Our, our media is out, out of control. So I think that'll be too much attention for him. But I don't think he plays that game. My and opinion. then uh, obviously my last question is uh the hand with uh I think what's the name? I think he's out. I, I can't see. Yeah, that. so then that's that's a short W. That's a W. That one I'm taking the over on the twenty. You taking you're taking over on the twenty. If if RJ is out and and Barnes is out, I, I'm taking the over on the twenty. Okay. And in those two games. Just projecting. Do you see OG or Mitch in any one of those two games? Yeah, your name. Put you on the, on the hot seat, bro. I'm saying, man, dang. Uh, I don't think I don't think Mitch shows up, but I think OG will. I think OG is gonna come back for the Toronto game. Okay. As much as I'd love to, I don't see them back on either one of those two games. Okay. okay. I don't see them on there. I I think it. I think ideally, it would be for sure. Mitch should be for these two games, but I don't see. I don't see that happening. And then the last game on Friday, us versus San Antonio. Wembanyama. Call your mama. I do. Do we get a W on that game? How does that look to you on that game? So this is three games. That that should be another W. There's that's another squad that's like. 10 and 50, right? They they're down there. They're down there. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say uh Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say we got a W on that one. And does Mitch or OG play? Well, you said you think they'd be back by one of those games, right? I think OG's going to be back for the Toronto game. I think I think unfortunately Mitch will be back somewhere around the uh, Seven or eight game mark left. Okay, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna renege my statement for you because I said that in the last podcast and I actually agree with you, which which I said in the last pod, last podcast and recanting my statement now. I think OG would be back by Toronto, and the reason I gave last time in the last podcast was because I think that's gonna be the first game. Well, we're in Toronto, so it's going to be at Toronto. That's going to be the first game OG would be back since being traded. Whether I'm giving me either like a, I don't say standing ovation, but, you know, just some kind of thank you for being here type of thing. That would be a game where he could come back. Mm -hmm. He's play that game, then see how it feels the next game or two and rest afterwards. But I think that would be a, so I'll ride with you on that one. I think that would be a good game where OG could come back. On that, being that's the first game at Toronto since he got traded. I like OG for that game. Um, I'm with you against San Antonio. I think we can get a W there. I would like to see Mitch on that game against one by Nyama. Um, Michael Drake I would says, like to see that too. Michael Drake says Mitchell Robinson will play tomorrow against Detroit. I'm, I'm hopeful. I would Is that a fact? Uh, I think that's his opinion. I don't I don't know if it's a fact. If it's a fact, Mitch, uh, Michael, I don't know if you know anything from there, but I think that's his feeling that Mitch would play tomorrow. He's got a couple of practices on his belt. Ideally, we'd love for you for that to be a fact. Um, Michael Drake also says Spurs, another win. So this could be a three-in-a-row win. We went three-and-one in the West. We could go three-and-zero oh so far. In this week, and then the Sunday that we come back, that game we play against OKC, who's on top of the West, who's playing out of control. They got an MVP caliber player. 
I don't think a 48 minute Deuce McBride, 48 minutes Josh Hart would be enough to beat that team. Um, without our regulars, I, I don't think, I'm being honest, I don't think the Band Aid duct tape flex seal squad is, <laughs> <laughs> is enough for OKC. We could, I mean, we gave full 48, but that could force us to injury. You know what I mean? If we're playing, they, they were, they're balling. You got to give them props. I don't see the Flex Hill squad being that squad. I think, and that's the game that I gave as a barometer. My personal opinion, I don't know anybody, but that would be the game that I would like to see Julius, Mitchell, and OG back by that game going forward. That would be a game that I would like to see them all get a, even if it's 10, 15, 20 minutes, even if we lose some kind of rhythm on a team that's going to give you, you know, push them or challenge them to, to win. So that's going to be interesting. Yes, I think we go three and one. I think we lose against OKC. I think I'm going to play the if game with you now. Okay. So I think if we got Mitch and OG back and Randall, I think we're taking that W. I right. might even take I might even take the W if it's just Mitch and OG that come back. I'm I'm a little iffy, but if we don't get these guys back, then I could see the L. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. I'm giving an L if we got the flex seal crew. <laughs> if we <laughs> if we got the flex seal crew, and we're doing for which I think, and again, I think it'll be a competitive game though. I think if it's a yeah. Game, I think it'll be within eight points, something like that. But I, if OG's in the game, I got us winning by three. If Mitch is in the game, I got us winning by eight. If Randall's in the game, I got us body bagging that. You know what I mean? So it, it, I think they're going to come extremely motivated. So that's a bit, you know what I mean? So I ain't playing a minute. You playing the squad. I'm I'm ready to go. So I, and if that's the case, I think we get a W. But if it's flex your crew. Valiant effort. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're going to need a, a white hot DiVincenzo and a supernova Jalen Brunson. And, and that's a home game. That's at the oh. Garden, though. Ah, okay. The Garden. So a full healthy squad could be a sighting. Oh. Mitchell. OG and Randall could be a sighting because that is a garden game on a Sunday. It's is it a matinee game? No, it's at 7 p.m. So it's even better. Even better. Even better. <laughs> even a couple hours of practice. Even better. So um that is my marquee game that I got the little thumbtack on of the grand reunion. I'm looking for the 31st. That's what I got on here for you. Yeah, all right. We're we're in agreement. So I got uh three and one. Uh, granted, the one is the if. So if if Flex Steel is playing, then that's the that's the loss. But if we got that squad back, that's that we could go four and zero. Oh. I, I like the I like the sound of that. <laughs> I'm I'm three and one. If it's a Flex Steel crew, four and zero. Oh, if at the last game we got the full the grand reunion. We got the reunion, then, then we in there. I, I'm liking that. But I definitely want to see the people by the 31st. I agree so that, that if they come, if they if they all come back at that date, how many games will be left from that date to to the end? From that date, we would have eight games to play. So I would feel very comfortable because again, my my barometer was ten games. So if it's eight games out. I'm still feeling very confident. And if we got that that time to ramp up, we should be hitting our stride as game one of the playoff start. I agree with you. And that, that I'm saying the OKC game because that's probably going to be the last a big game. You know what I'm saying? Where mm -hmm. Madison Square Garden, Sunday, playoff atmosphere, getting Mitchell that. Is it nationally televised? Uh, who's, let me see who's on that thunder. 
Let me see if it says. It doesn't say who is hosting it as far as on TV. I think it would be because it's a Sunday game. I'm assuming it could be. But for us, at least, I mean, you got a top team in the West, one that you could possibly face in the finals, one of the last games to get geared into it. To get into to get to that energy to know where you need to be at at a level. So even if Mitch, Randall come back, OG, to know the level you need to be at for playoff readiness. You know what I mean? Because the rest of the games are gonna be eh, but the intensity you need to know where you need to be ready. So as you go on these later games, where you need to have that intensity to be ready for the playoff. So I think that's why it's a big marker game for me, and then the rest will be light games other than the Heat game, which I think is right after that. Other than that, you're going to have the Heat, which is the game right after that. So you would have OKC, and then Tuesday you'd have the Heat. So two big games with playoff-ish atmospheres, and then the rest would die down to give you, you know what I mean, to give you that mindset of where you need to be at for players who are injured. So I kind of like that as my barometer for them to go. But I definitely see a 3-1 and one unless they come in 4-0, and oh, and then we get into rhythm on there. But I like that for you. I can't wait to hear your work on waiver wire and potential players that may not be available and the number for precious, if it's not precious. Interesting to see. I appreciate you all of you in the chat. How many things is always coach, Just Nix, Michael Drake, uh Keith Watkins, everybody out there, always G Man78. All you guys always in the chat as always appreciate you guys. Our new up and coming that came in today. We appreciate you guys all of giving that feedback. Who else was new Knicks? And we're coming back out of Machete. Uh what was our other player that got that? Second. Well, everybody in the game, appreciate you guys for joining us as always. And Clarence Smiles, salute to you first time. Check you guys next time. We'll be back Friday, 5 p.m. Sunday, 5 p.m. So we're going to see if two shots did his homework and we're going to look into it. Yeah, Word. Right. Before before you complete the outro, smash the like, share, subscribe. You know the vibes, man. Don't make me come for you, bro. What he said, what he said. We, we, we are just a humble place here. We're trying to get a 500. We have 270-something. Share, like, subscribe, put some content. Share some screenshot, record it, post it on your feed. Get people out here Friday, 5 p.m., Sunday, 5 p.m. We appreciate you guys. We out here. Get us to five. 500. Just a, a simple 500 people in the thousands. You know, we just are humble. You know what we do? We just have fun. If you vibe and you have fun with us, with us and our New York Knicks, our Flexio crew, the content <laughs> we come up, we come up with the crazies. Saucy Sunday, you know, we down to sober Sunday, whatever it is we do. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for checking us out. Until next week, we back out of the game. You heard? You're.